Hey guys, quick disclaimer, uh, this is a podcast that me and my friend Andrew Cherry recorded about our feelings about the show Ruby after volume six's end. Uh, it's very long and pretty harsh, so if you're not into that kind of thing, understandably, I'd recommend skipping it. You've been warned. All right, so <laughs> how, how do we start this? I don't know. I'm actually, it's, it's slightly intimidating. Because, yeah. like, just trying to sum up everything that happened in this season uh, and not forget anything. Because, like, it, this, this is the thing. Like, the last three seasons, nothing has happened, plot-wise, really. That's the crazy thing. It's, like, so much happened this season, but also technically nothing happened. Yeah, like, j- like just as little as the last t- two seasons before it. Except there's yeah. so much more to talk about. They just dropped a bunch of shit on us. Mm. They walked ten feet, and and then just piles of shit fell on them. <laughs> Do we need to summarize Ruby or t- say what it is before we start? It might be worth doing. I, I guess yeah, we could give like a general brief overview of the concept if someone's like curious enough to hear about it, but hasn't seen a Rube. Fuck! Why do you even start with that? Like, <laughs> you want you want to do it? or Do you want me to do it? <laughs> uh, well, I'm trying to think. What, what's where to start? So there's like back in like early two thousands, there was a guy called Monty Ohm. Who... Look, this is 2013. Don't make it sound like it was like 500 years ago. <laughs> was that was that was that when he was, yeah, no no, but when was he doing like Red versus Blue? Oh, no. Like... Yeah, he that was around like 2012. Oh, okay. Or something. Oh. Cuz he was still working on Red versus Blue when the when he started Rube. And his big thing was Dead Fantasy. Mm. Which which was uh Final Fantasy characters versus dead or alive girls like hitting each other and and then so they hired him to do the fight scenes in Red versus Blue, mm. and and then he was like I want to make my own anime yeah yeah and it's and it's, it'll, it'll be the best and they're like all right let's do it it's you seem qualified to make a whole anime <laughs> you're good at fight scenes so let's let you make an anime which could have worked if the show had just been about the fight scenes that yeah. could have worked because he was good at fight scenes that was his thing like. Yeah, yeah, so if you've never seen anything about RWBY, which is pronounced Ruby, mm-hmm. uh, it, they had four trailers that came out. And again, this was back in 2013, and uh, and the trailers were mostly just fights. The first two were just fights, and then they got progressively more talky and more like, oh no, this is going to be <laughs> something. <laughs> that, that was the thing, wasn't it? Like, the first two didn't have any dialogue, it was just a fight, and people were like, ah, oh, this looks cool, and then they started talking. Yeah, like, I know you're not as into the fights in general, but how do you feel about, like, the red trailer? It's, yeah, I mean, look, it's not, it's not as much my thing, but it, I can appreciate, like, the aesthetic of it. It's pretty yeah. cool. The song's kind of cool. It, like, it had aesthetic. Yeah, it did, yeah. It had, I mean, it the had, song like, wasn't a, even butt rock, which is, you know, what became such a thing <laughs> later. <laughs> it's it it's classy. Funny. Yeah, but I could see how people could be pumped for it, because it does look, this looks cool. Like, yeah. Um, in, especially like coming from like a US studio, this is kind of interesting. And it's all you know, they're they're, they're just like a little internet company where they were at the time. So that's something that's sort of like cool to get behind. But, yeah. Yeah, but then it just started to look stupider, and then the show started. So it's yeah, the show itself is the idea is that it's um, it's like a it's sort of like a Harry Potter thing, but for fighting anime girls. Essentially. Yeah, it's like Soul Eater, but it not Halloween. <laughs> yeah, it's if you've seen Soul Eater. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a um, it's a show about this this world where there's human colonies and there's all over the world there's these creatures called Grim that attack humans uh, when they're essentially like feeling bad or panicky. They're attracted to negative emotions. So yeah. in response to that, humans uh, set up this system for training people called hunters who are capable of fighting the Grim. And all the hunters have to go to one of four schools in one of the four different nations around the world. And the show follows um, a, a character called Ruby, who is... Theoretically. Uh, hun- yeah, theoretically. <laughs> follows a character called Ruby, who is a hunter in training, uh, as she starts off at this school called Beacon. And she's part of a team, uh, which includes her sister, uh, a rich, spoiled girl, uh, and... Um, Another girl who turns out to be a... How are you going to describe her? How are you going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll give the names. There's, there's Ruby. There's Yang, who's Ruby's half-sister. There is mm-hmm. Weiss, who is the rich, spoiled girl, who's the heiress to, like, a, a dust company. A dust is like a... It's it's magic in... Interior. Powder form. Yeah, yeah. God, there's so much stupid detail in the show. And there's Blake. <laughs> 
Blake is a... Now yeah, it's Blake. Blake is what's called a Faunus, which is meant to be like a separate race. Really, they're just humans that have like one animal thing on them. Like in Blake's case, she has cat ears. Now, 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 be careful. They are very careful to never use the word race when referring to Faunus. Yeah. They're a different species. Sorry, different species. But it's absolutely a race analogy. Because, like, the Faunus were persecuted and enslaved and and since then have risen up and won their freedom through terrorist actions. And despite being, like, 16, Blake is an ex-terrorist uh, or yeah. was for quite a while. Um, oh, fuck. She's had a wild childhood. Yeah, yeah. And so, but, but they don't, in season one, you don't find out she's a Faunus. Like, the whole time she's wearing this bow, this big stupid no, bow. In, in, in later season one, you do. I'd say, like, halfway yeah. through season one. Yeah, 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 she yeah. takes a bow off all dramatically, and it's like, oh, I am a minority. <laughs> I have cat ears. And it's really, and she has the tiny purple cat ears in season one, and it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. It, so the thing about the thing about Ruby, right, is if it had just been a show about fighting, like cool fights with these anime girls that have crazy weapons and they jump around and stuff, that might have been okay. Oh, yeah. And in the first couple of seasons, it sort of was that, where, like, the plot was very stupid, and the world is dumb and doesn't really make sense, but it was just really a vehicle to get from fight scene to fight scene. But in between seasons two and three, unfortunately, Monty Ohm died suddenly. And yeah. the show was taken over by two of the other guys who had been working on it, a guy called Miles Luna and uh, Kerry... Uh, what's his name? Shawcross. Yeah, Sherry, Kerry Shawcross. And all three of them were always writers on it, but yeah. uh, you kind of had the impression that, like, because cause all the stuff that wasn't fighting was always badly written. Yes, yeah, terribly. And you kind of got the impression that Monty was just like, I'll be working on the fights, and you guys write the shit that comes between them. Mm. And it was all, like, bad racism metaphors, and <laughs> John, who I'm sure we'll talk about more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's sort of, it, it, now that the guy who was good at the fights, which was the only good thing about the show, was gone... Um, the show started to t- t- really deteriorate from that point. Yet somehow, is yeah. in its sixth season, which is what we're going to be talking about. Um, yeah, but volume three, they still had a couple good fight guys, but then they left and there was that whole thing. So then there was no one left to really lead the fights. Oh, yeah, that's that's part of the thing, is that Art- R- Rooster Teeth, the company that uh, makes Ruby, it seems like... Um, they have a high turnover rate, I guess you can say. <laughs> yeah. It, do- it doesn't seem like a great place to work. Um, yeah, so most people of come the and... glass door things complain about their HR department and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, they seem to have trouble holding on to people, and so as the show has gone on, there's been fewer and fewer fight scenes, and the story has gotten more and more out of control in terms of... Uh, just, just branching Everything. off into nonsense <laughs> and forgetting what they were doing. And I guess it's... It's very hard to summarize Ruby because, like, I do this podcast where we look at bad pilots, right? And Ruby is like a show that was, a, like, a, a terrible pilot, but they just kept going with the same people. Yeah. And it just got – it just spun further and further out of hand, like a fractal. Like, <laughs> so I was thinking, like, you described it as, you know, like, oh, it's about her going to Beacon, but that ends at, in Volume 3 because the school gets destroyed. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, so now it's about them questing the world for MacGuffins and magical people and well, it's, stuff. Well, it, it's sort of about them trying to kill God at this point. <laughs> like, no, because the gods are not the bad guys. Well, yeah, but the, it's, there's a person who's a bit like a god. That, who they're trying That's to kill. That's true. There's an immortal evil lady, yeah. so-called evil, supposedly. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get to that. But, oh, God, I can't wait. It's yeah. about episode three. So, so um, to just rush through the plot really quick, basically, while they're, while they're at the school, uh, there's this other evil group that are trying to destroy Beacon for some everything, reason. Presumably. Everything. They're trying to destroy everything. It's not really explained why. Uh, yeah, to but this they're day. school for now. Yeah. Um, and anyway, so the school gets infiltrated, there's a big attack, um, the school crumbles, uh, everyone has to run. And in the middle of season three, there was also some other stuff explained about how there's also, like, four magical women, and then you get explained that there's these things called relics that can be, that have, like, special powers that the magic women are connected to. And so seasons four and five are kind of about that, sort of. But, like, season four is... 
this is the thing. Their plan is for the show to go 12 seasons, right? So season four yeah. was about the, the, the team splits up for a bit and one of the members of the team spends the entire season walking from one location to the other. And, and the season, other three members spend their time sitting at home. Yeah, they sit at home until they eventually... Literally. Like, they literally sit at home having um, issues of various sorts which are very poorly handled. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like... Weiss just stays at home. Yang had PTSD because her arm got cut off. Uh, you discover Blake is also like a Faunus princess, just to add even more confusing elements to her character. Yes. And yeah, and then so like yeah, Ruby spends season four walking from one location to the other. Season five is spent in that location. And nothing really happens. And now season six is a transitional walking season to a new. Col- uh, Location. Yeah, it was walking to another location. And this this was the maddening thing, right? So at the end of season four, after you've watched this one character walk from one nation to the other, at the very end of the season, you see a person heading to the same place, but he's on a train. <laughs> which which I, I fucking kill myself laughing at that at the end of it, because like we, we spent this whole season watching these idiots fucking walk for no reason, and he's a dude on a train. So at the start of season six, everyone's on a train. Hey. And I was like, hey, they learned. They've learned something. They're, they're not going to be walking anywhere. Yeah, uh, guess what? <laughs> Fucking fool. <laughs> yeah. You dummy. Yeah, the train gets attacked and um, they have to... they got to start walking right away. they got to walk, yeah, they got to walk some more. So the, the, where they were at at the start of season six was that the team's all back together. They have uh, one of four relics. Now, they don't really know what the relics are about so much at this point, other than that they were... Uh, they, they know they have the relic of knowledge, yeah, and re- that is it's very cool and powerful. Yeah, it's one. That's it's all they know. It's one of four relics. That, there's a, there's an episode somewhere in season four where a character explains the backstory of the world in in terms of how humans were created and the gods and like the relics according to the, according to this story was something like the tools that we use to make humans and the world, and the gods just kind of left them behind. And at or, some point, or it was like we gave you like the same power that we have, or something. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just like the gods wanted to give you Dragon Balls, so he was four <laughs> of them. Yeah, yeah. It's a, there, there was the, the there's a god of creation and a god of destruction who are brothers. So yeah. there's a there's a relic of creation and there's a relic of destruction. Yeah, then, yeah. That's funny that like two of the relics directly correspond to them, but then there's also the knowledge one and yeah, the, the choice one. The knowledge, yeah. There's a relic of knowledge and the relic of choice, which is the two gifts that were given to humans. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and and then someone took the relics and hid them underneath all of the hunter training schools. Supposedly, that's that's supposedly where they are. It was Ospin. <laughs> it was Ospin. Yeah, guy, it was a guy called Ospin who used to run uh, the school and then died. And then in seasons four, he turned up inside the testicles of a young boy. Uh, Look, we can't we can't start <laughs> memeing on people. We can't. No, okay, <laughs> we sorry, gotta that's, be that's straight. Just, okay, no, he no, he's not literally in the testicles. Basically, th- this guy Ospin, um, he was like the Dumbledore. He was he, like the headmaster, mysterious man. Yeah, he was the shitty knockoff Dumbledore of Beacon. He died. He was killed, and then he suddenly appeared inside the mind of like a twelve-year-old farm boy. And he's just he's kind of 14. there. He's but 14? yeah, he, oh, he's wow. he's a good young boy. He's the only like likable nice boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, and he has he has to have his mind taken over by this old man who will never leave. Yeah, he's just constantly there yammering in his head about how you need to leave your home and everyone you know right now to go to a place you've never been to to warn someone about the bad guys that are coming to get the relic at the other school. Which he does. You have to become anime. <laughs> So, but, and he says, "There, I can't handle the there are thoughts now. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> so fucked up. But there's two people talking, so they're not our thoughts. We have distinctly separate, like, we've got two voices. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, so he has to do that. Uh, yeah, I see, I see, yeah, so getting back to the relics. The relics so Ospen, is, it turns out, is immortal. He just keeps reincarnating inside other people's bodies. And he's... Yeah, because it was a curse, as of what he told us in, in Volume 5, the gods cursed him for failing to stop Salem, the big evil lady, with eternal life. That's right, yes, that's what they said. Okay, so this is one of the things yes. you need to remember about Ruby, is that since Season 4, they've become obsessed with their own lore. They've become obsessed with the world building. And the issue is that they... 
season to season and occasionally episode to episode and very occasionally within the one episode, they can't actually remember the law they said and they tell you yeah. something different. They continually it's like revise. when you have a new idea, <laughs> but you forgot that you already put the old idea in the show. Yeah, and so they just they have they don't have a consistent idea of what the fuck's happening in their own show. So will, the show will just continually contradict itself in a way that no one notices. Um, yeah, yeah, like Ozpin specifically, there is a World of Remnant episode, which is like their side information things they do, where it specifically says, and with when if you master your aura, you can become more than a man, and it shows Ozpin. But then it's like, no, the gods cursed me for failing to stop Salem, and that's why I'm immortal. And then in this season, we learn a third reason that <laughs> that's why he's immortal. Yeah. Oh, by the way, aura. Everyone has aura. It's like a magic oh, yeah. thing. The, like, the reason that people can hit each other with swords and shit all the time is that they have essentially like a... Is it like a sort of magic telepathic armor on themselves? Kind of? Yeah, I always think about it like um, when you cast bear, like a shell or whatever in Final Fantasy. Yeah. It, it's, it's your MP for using magics, but not magic. It's not magic, it's like a superpower. It's different <laughs> from magic, which is a different thing. And... Um, <laughs> But but it's also like if someone hits you, then it doesn't actually hurt you. It like takes mm. down your HP MP barrier until yeah, you run out of it, and then yeah. you can get actually hurt. Yeah, if your aura goes down, you can actually be killed. Like you, when you get stabbed, you will be you will get stabbed and die. Yeah, and there's like a halo shield, like brown. Yeah, <laughs> I sort of you I know, forgot if your about. Goes, I forgot about the magic thing. Yeah, because like this is the other thing. There's so much magic bullshit in the show, but there's a point earlier on when. Someone refers to something as magic, and everyone's mind is blown, and and they go, yeah. "Oh, magic is real." And it, it, Weiss's Weiss's power, because everyone has a unique power. Mm. Weiss's power is that she can she can channel dust, the material stuff, into elemental abilities that she shoots with her sword not a wand and it's not magic it she can shoot ice and cast haste but not like in a magic way it's like no, not, it's not magic, magic though it's not magic it's not magic magic is magic yeah. is magic is strictly when people turn into birds anyway um yes. so explain sorry this is a very long explanation because there's a lot of backstory to cover to get to the start of season ruby's six. fucking nuts ruby is nuts it's important though yeah, it is so th- yeah there's there's four relics that were hidden um the reason that Cinder was a, the reason that Beacon was attacked by the bad guys led by this person called Cinder was that they wanted the relic at Beacon. But as to this point, as far as we know, they never found it. It's not there or something. Yeah, and um, the problem is that relics didn't exist until Volume Four and were never hinted at before Volume Four. But no. Beacon was destroyed in Volume Three, <laughs> so basically they had to make up an excuse for why they destroyed Beacon but didn't go for the relic, which totally existed back then and wasn't added just in Volume Four. <laughs> so it's like, oh, he that one he hid extra good. Yeah. So yeah. they they totally probably tried to find it off screen, but they couldn't because he hid it super good. Yeah. Yeah. Like the bad guys don't even talk at any point about how hey how come we haven't found the relic of beacon yet like where the no, fuck is not it? until volume four yeah when they're like oh yeah remember the the most important thing that we were totally worried about <laughs> where is it Oops. so <laughs> so at in the end of volume five the team ruby so mm-hmm. uh, okay so all of the when when people were training a beacon they were given team names that all had to correspond with the color. And so Ruby was put in charge of her team, and her name is R U, which is called Team Ru- Ruby, because her Ruby. name is R U B Y Ruby, but the team name is made up of um, uh, the R-W-B-Y. initials. R W B Y. Yeah, the initials of all the team members. So it's R W B Y, which is the name of the show. Ruby. Yeah, but you're legally required to pronounce it Ruby. Ruby. Yeah, it's Ruby. Everyone says everyone just pronounces it Ruby. So they, they managed to get their hands on the relic of knowledge and yeah. they decided that what they should do with this relic in order to stop Cinder and Salem and the other bad guys from getting it is to take it to the best defended place which currently is a place called Atlas which is again this is one of these things that doesn't make sense in this fucking show every other nation has like their transport is like basic trains and airships meanwhile like over- magical airships magical airships and like like it's it's really it's it's not like medieval but it's like very 
it seems like basic technology. Meanwhile, just over there, there's a nation that has like fucking spaceships and <laughs> lasers. Yeah, and... Atlas is sci-fi fascist land. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's weirdly way more advanced than everyone else. And when Beacon fell, they went insular and closed their borders and said, "Fuck off! No one come here anymore." Um, yeah, which has been it's been about two years since then. Yeah, volumes four and five, where they're walking, take over a year <laughs> of of them walking and sitting at home. <laughs> so, so they're, now they're like, we need to get this relic to fascist land to protect it because because they had the relics, it, they had the one in Beacon, and it got fucked up, and then they went to Haven, and that relic place got all fucked up and attacked, and so they're like, we need to take it to the third place. This one will definitely be super safe. Yeah, yeah, there's def- it's definitely not going to be attacked by the same people who have never had any issue getting into wherever they wanted to get into. Uh, but let's go there. Yeah, but this one's the best one, though, definitely. <laughs> There's also a fourth place called Vacuo, which we don't know anything about yet. Yeah, that's for that's for Seasons 10 or something, whatever. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Nine. Well, Season 7 is going to be walking to Vacuo. Se- season 7 is going to be in Atlas. Season 8 is going to be walking to Vacuo. Yeah, season nine so will season be in nine Vacuo. in Vacuo. I guess season... season 10 probably walking to Salem. <laughs> oh, well, no, I think Season 10 will be walking back to Beacon. Oh, yeah. And then season 11 will be in Beacon, getting whatever relic that was. And then season 12, the final season, is Walk to Salem and Killed Her in the Last Episode, I imagine. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Justice for Salem. <laughs> so. Salem did nothing wrong, hashtag. Finally, the start of season six is they're on the train. They're, they're on a train trying to get to Atlas, but they get attacked by Grimm. Which again are the See, m- but this is the problem. You keep talking about it like Team R W B Y, like we're following four characters around. Yes, good point. You've made a grave mistake. I have made a grave mistake. <laughs> okay, so it- the party currently <laughs> is R W B Y. It's Team Ruby. Yes. Then you have Junior, which is J N N R John Noren Ren, who are three other losers from a different team who had a fourth member that died so that John could cry about it. And John is the worst character and a criminal. <laughs> and then you've also got Oscar, who has Oz pin inside his balls and can never be alone and is a poor boy and is a good boy and deserves better. Yes. And then you have Kuro, which is, it's Crow, but it's spelled with a Q at the start because anime. Yeah. Um, Crow... Voiced by Vic Mignona, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's been sacked, which credit Topical. to... Credit to, uh, uh, credit to the Rooster Teeth, they were the first to openly sack him for being an awful person. So that's Are good. They, I thought Funimation did it first. No, no, uh, no. Uh, Rooster Teeth did it first. Oh, well, good on them then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was actually, like, it's worthy of some praise. They they were the ones yeah. to bite the bullet and do that first. But he um, was definitely one of the more competent voice actors, unfortunately. Yeah, so yeah. So it'll be interesting and, and to Crow, see what they do about Crow. Crow used to be one of the better characters as well. Um, yeah, because Crow is, like, Ruby's cool mentor uncle guy who also has a scythe. And yeah. uh, and he like ended up kind of being their de facto leader because he's like the one adult. So he was like, "We're gonna go, and I'll handle you guys, I guess." Yeah, but they. So, so the team is Oscar, R W B Y, uh, Crow, J N R. So that's nine people. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then they get a they get a tenth person on the train. <laughs> the, the thing the thing about Ruby is that whenever they decide they want to introduce something new. They can't ever bring themselves to just work it into the backstory of an already existing character. They have to bring in someone else. They have to just add someone else to the fucking party. And you just end up... You, you end up with this situation where there's so many characters here just doing nothing. Who just have nothing yeah. to do in terms of an arc or a purpose in this season. They're just hangers-on. And it, like, it's, it's particularly bad with Crow because Crow... Like, where are the, all these... Everyone else in this over large team now are students or were students Crow was like an older hunter who should be hyper competent so they have to keep coming up with reasons why he isn't just doing a much better job than they were before you say they have to keep coming up with reasons but they don't really come up with reasons it's just he just conveniently doesn't kick as much ass as you think he should when no, he no well, well, okay yeah so that's I guess that's what I mean is they just they just don't he just doesn't he just he just yeah, illogically he just is not better than everyone else at what these thought he was to be a cool guy at. cool drunk guy nah, he sucks. no nah, he sucks yeah he's an alcoholic and he sucks um so anyway yeah they while they're on this train they get a, the, the train gets attacked by Grimm and Ozpin has to admit that the relics attract Grimm. Yeah, he says it's slight, but the relics do attract Grimm, kind of like upset people do. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, ignoring for the minute that the rules in terms of Grimm are completely inconsistent and Miles and that just sort of forget to use Grimm all the time as part of yeah. their setting. Like, there's all sorts of occasions when Grimm... Grimm should be really scary. Like, any any time you go out of a city, Grimm should be an ever-present threat. And there's, like, there's whole seasons where they just sort of forget they're there. <laughs> yeah, and, like, your entire season... I mean, your entire society should be built up around the fact that, like, if you get too sad, monsters show up. <laughs> yeah, and try to kill like, that's, you. That's that's a big fucking thing. Yeah. and and so, really and, a problem. And, and something sort of vaguely unique to this show. Like, this this should be part of its selling point. This should be part of, like, the... the I don't know. It's just... Oh, God, it's annoying. No, um, yeah, it, it it could be really interesting. Like, hmm. it could lead to a lot of weird philosophical... You know, it almost becomes like a psychopath scenario where yeah. it's, like, people who are too depressed end up getting shunned because you're going to get everyone killed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it could be... that It could be really interesting, but um, they don't do anything with it. Or they yeah, rarely... it's more that just, like, if enough people are upset all together, then Grimm will probably show up and be like, hey, we heard there were sad people. <laughs> but in, in the meantime, Grimm, just, Grimm tend to show up anyway. But um, yeah, in this case, they show up. There's a fight in the train. The fight's... Okay. It's, oh, it's better than anything in season five, I'll say that. Yeah. Th- it's there not was... like the worst. So, so this this was the thing. In season four, nothing happened, except for one shitty fight at the end. Oh, and the, there and there the, was and a the... semi-decent fight with Quoro. Oh, and Tyrion, yeah. It, it, it wasn't very good, though. Yeah, Tyrion's a scorpion for us, uh, who's awful. He's, he's an awful, like, yeah, he's, he's, he's crazy. Yeah, he's like, I'm crazy, and maybe horny, probably. Yeah, so he he just laughs Make all the time. Make you uncomfortable. Yeah, he's, oh, God, he's awful. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that, yeah, there were two fights in season four. Remember, season four is, like, 13 episodes long, and there's two fights. Um, Wait, there's also the golem fight at the beginning. Oh, yeah, but that also sucks. I okay, love three when fights. people hit things, and it, it's not on screen. <laughs> yeah, well, this was season five's thing. Was we're not going to have any fights until the very end, and every time you, we should see someone fighting, we're going to cut away to someone else talking. <laughs> it really is like just watching it all together was so crazy. <laughs> it was like, big... are you okay? No, I'm mad. Cut away. <laughs> that's Ruby's voice, by the way. That's how Ruby talks. Yeah, that's how I talk. I'm Ruby. <sighs> yeah. Everyone assures me it's very accurate. <laughs> She's meant to be cute. And shit, like that. Well, that, that, again, this is because it's like an anime ripoff. She's the sort of moe, kind of cute girl. But they again, yeah, they she was she was it. the Genki girl. But because everything's so serious now, she's not really allowed to be that character much. But she still has to talk like this. So she'll be like, "I'm really mad about all the people that just died," <laughs> and it, it's it's pretty good. <laughs> Because oh, on the train, in the train fight, there's like two hunters that they present as, oh, these are the, the loser hunters. They fucking suck. And one of them gets carried off by a Grim, And they're like, what's the plan now, Ruby? And she's like, don't let anyone else die. <laughs> and it's like, well, how do you know he's dead? You're just going to let... You could have done so many things about that. I guess you're <laughs> fine with him being dead. Okay. <laughs> oh, he did suck. Like, like all That's adult hunters. That's you get hunters. for questioning us. Like all adult hunters, he sucked. Like he yeah. sucked, but he didn't. He deserves to die. Suck. No, absolutely not. It just, but he did. So yeah. he, he did die. So we assume we didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, in order to protect the people on the train, yeah. Team J and R like get fucked off for a little bit, which is kind of kind oh, of a it was positive such thing. relief. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. actually they they put Team J and R on the train with all the other people. Um, who were just like the civilians who were just traveling on the train and cut some of the carriages off. And Team Ruby and Oscar and Crow stay behind to fight the Grim. The train crashes, and now they're stuck in the wilderness. And I guess we're going to be walking. We the rest walk, of the... But at least JNR isn't here. Yeah, yeah. We, and yeah, we... now there's an old lady. Oh yeah, there's an old lady. There was an old lady on the tra- on their half of the train who's here, and she's sassy. She's a sassy yeah, old she's lady. Yeah, she's a sassy old lady, and her name is Maria Calavera. <sighs> Yeah. And she says she says it like that. She's voiced by a white lady, but she she's very Hispanic. I assure you. <laughs> What's weird is the Hispanic accent only really comes in when she says a name. Yeah, and, and then she just talks in an old lady voice. Yeah, yeah. The um, <laughs> the VA uh, was asked about is it okay? Do you oh. think it's all right that you know this could have been a role for a Hispanic voice actor, but it's gone to another white person. And the VA on Twitter said something along the lines of, it's okay, I, I grew up around a lot of Hispanic people, so it's it's part of my culture. 
So yeah, she's like, I I I I grew up in San Antonio, and I it, I'm really excited because I felt like I didn't appreciate the culture when I was a kid or something. And it's like that's not what the question was about. No. <laughs> it's not about if you've ever met a Hispanic person as a young person. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, rooster teeth. Anyway, so now they've got to walk. Now the other, so the, now the other thing that happens at the start of season one, and this is this is relevant for the very end of the season. And I've got to go back and explain a little bit more stuff before we get so this makes sense. There's a group called the White Fang who were a foreignist <laughs> terrorist group. And I just Blake, love like starting a thought with having to explain the White Fang. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a group called the White Fang. <sighs> <laughs> This this nonsensical fucking uh, faunus terrorist organization that is, it's either like thousands of men strong or it's six dudes, depending on which episode it is. Yeah. Blake was in it. There's a guy called Adam who was set up like he was the leader and then it turned out he wasn't the leader, but in the scene where you found out he wasn't the leader, he kills the leader and becomes the leader. So that's convenient. Um, <laughs> he then, at the end of season five, he tried to help the bad guys and attack Blake but Blake turned up with half of all Faunus and defeated the six <laughs> the six White Fang dudes that Adam turned up with. Yeah, it seemed like there might have been more off screen, but who knows for for all we know that he had like six dudes. He had six dudes, yeah. Um and Adam sort of Adam walks home. Um <laughs> Yeah, Adam Slowly. gets bitched. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's like, uh, I'm going to defeat it. And she's like, it's his turn to run away now. Because mm. that's presented as Blake's character flaw as she runs away. Mm. But now Adam, the evil man, has to run away. Yeah, they're, 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 like, they're also ex-partners. And Adam's sort of a stalky ex-lover who won't leave Blake yeah, alone. Yeah, he calls her darling. He's also, he's also the one who cut off Yang's arm and who Yang was having PTSD about. Yeah, so they um, both have PTSD about him. Yeah, yeah. Also, the show is kind of shipping uh, Yang and Blake, although it yes. was very, it was very not confirmed, and looked like bait for a long time. Although at this point, it seems like they actually are committing to it, which is kind of nice, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I do think so. Yeah, but like, it, it's worth noting that like. The the most shitty thing to me was Volume 4 when they had their soundtrack released and there was a song on it called Bumblebee, which is the name of their ship, which is about fucking them going to a garden of ecstasy together and being so in love. And then RT had to come out and say, hey, it's just a song that Jeff wrote because he likes it and it's not canon, guys. Don't think <laughs> that it's real gaze. It's not canon gaze. Uh, but then they kept baiting it and baiting it and I think at this point they're just committed and they have to make it canon. Yeah, and yeah. I so, just wish they'd hurry up and do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They still haven't like kissed or anything. But it's sort no, of, but yeah. it, it seems very, very likely for reasons that I'm sure we'll talk about. So Adam got bitch slapped. His response to this was to go back to the White Fang headquarters, which is a giant hall for some reason, and just kill all of the White Fang, I guess. Yeah, he kills pres- apparently everybody, at least everybody at the place, which again, like because you never see large crowds of White Fang anymore, it's like, was that all that was there? Is that all the White Fang? There was like those six guys. <laughs> But he, he has a big hissy fit, and he kills everyone, and he's, and he's like, Blake, I hate you so fucking much, and he mm. chops the throne in half, and he's like, mm, I'm angry. Mm. His character at this point has been reduced. He, at, at first, he was treated like this sort of, he was, was a conflicted villain in terms of, he had a legitimate beef with humans about the way Faunus had been treated, and he, that could have been kind of interesting, but by the end of, by this point, he really is just stalky ex-boyfriend. Um, yeah, like he... Like, one of the characters, is, Weiss, is the heiress to the evil company that you find out fucking branded him. <laughs> <laughs> On the eye. Later. <laughs> yeah. And um, have, like, are, like, the big enemy of Faunus. They're always fucking with uh, Sneedus company. Mm. But she... But he doesn't give a fuck that Weiss is, like, there in the party when he's following them around. And he's never acknowledged her. He only cares about Blake. He's, about he's never Blake. actually even, like, spoken to her or been in the same room as her, I don't think. No. And then, uh, her and Ruby, for all we know, have no idea what he looks like or who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've never seen him. It's uh, Only two of the main team have ever seen him or even know he's around. Yeah, it's maybe like, they've seen him on a wanted poster or something off screen. Yeah, yeah. So just, just bear in mind, every now and again throughout this season, we see... Blake and Yang think they see Adam, and then he yeah, it happens again once for Blake and once for Yang, and it's like, oh, they're having PTSD hallucinations, and mm. I guess that's still what was happening. 
Well, it's hard to say because he shows up at the end. <laughs> yeah, so you find out at the end that he's been stalking them the entire time. So maybe somehow. he was there. He, like somehow caught up with them. But like the way that they see him is clearly not literal because like Yang sees him in his old outfit he was wearing and he like does a slash all dramatically at the screen. Mm. And she's like, whoa, jump scared by Adam. Mm. But like clearly that didn't literally happen. But was he still there? We don't fucking know. No, yeah. Because it would make a little more sense if he followed them onto the train and then waited for them in town, and it yeah. just wasn't following them through their trek through the woods. But we have no indication that was the case, and we have no idea how he showed up again. No, and that could have been actually dramatic if, like, as they were like, as they were herding the civilians onto the train that was heading to the place they were going. If you just you saw one person in a hood and it was Adam, who was like hiding from Cause, them. That God, it's cool. weird because I think. The idea during one of the scenes later with Miss Malachite is that Adam was asking about them because she's like, you're not the only one who was asking about Team Rewubi. And, uh, but like, oh, the timeline gets so confusing because then it's mm-hmm. like, we already saw him on the train or did we? And, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. He shows up, no matter how you look at it, it was super random. And even the people that were excited about it were like, I don't know why he's here, but this is cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But that's so, later. So yeah, the, the, point, the point is, the thing we just need to establish at the start is that he, he, seem, he seems to have ended the White Fang, and now he's following them. Anyway. Yeah, so, so just keep in mind, during all these events, he's maybe there in the background somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but we, but we don't know. Um, so Team Ruby and Crow and Oscar and Old Lady start walking to uh, Atlas. Meanwhile, uh, Cinder. Cinder. So at the end of season five, the one of the bad guys, Cinder, who also who was also one of the magical four magical women, the maidens, who got the maiden. She got stole the maiden powers off another maiden. Um, yeah. At the end of season five, we saw her get frozen and fall off a cliff. Uh, turned like out she super survived far, that. like you you see her fall into the darkness, like whoa. Yeah, she fell a long and she's way. Co- frozen, completely solid. <laughs> and we were like, worry. we know she's not dead because she's been an antagonist for five volumes, and they still haven't told us dick one about her. <laughs> so it's like clearly they're going to make her survive, but how are they going to excuse her not being dead? What kind of magics will be used but to make the... her n- not die from this? But this is the thing with Ruby, where it's like. Yeah, that makes sense that we haven't learned anything about her. So it's, it, it figures that she should be important later on. But I can never trust that they just mishandle something. <laughs> like, <we're> like <laughs> Wait, did you think she might actually be dead, though? Well, no. I guess you already knew. I, yeah, I bet the, but I also, I mean, I also, I, I wouldn't have thought Roman was dead. That's so, true. Or Penny. Like, this is, this is the thing where, I don't, I don't think, I think Penny's going to show up again. This is the other thing. Yeah. They've, had, they've had characters who have been fun and interesting in the past, but they all, they're they the ones they tend to kill. <laughs> yes, was, all the ones that people actually like, they kill. Yeah, so there was Roman, who was a bad guy, who was he was basically a, um, what's the word? The, the guy's from um, uh, Clockwork Orange. Oh, he's a droogie. He's a droogie. He was, he, he's, he's, he, he's a, or he looks like a droogie, but he's like a mobster leader guy. Um, hmm. He's like Team Rocket, but in this yeah. world with like super powerful, magical girl people. So it, it's like he was always kind of funny because he like he didn't seem like he could fight super well. I mean, I guess he could hold his own, but that wasn't really his shtick. He was just no. like, I'm trying to do crimes and make money, and all these super girls keep attacking me, and I'm just trying to do my business. Yeah, yeah. Until the last scene we saw him in, which was he was fighting Ruby and absolutely kicking her ass. Oh yeah, like, he, she was like in the fetal position. He was kicking her, and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> it was this is some real ass shit." Now it was it was surprisingly harsh. And then he gets eaten by a dragon. Um, yeah, and it was a pretty good scene. Yeah, it, but but it was like, but you can't kill Roman. He's like the only likable villain. Yeah. Now he now the thing is about Roman is he had a partner. He had a partner. Is this character called Neo? Neo, Neo. or ne- Neapolitan, shortened to Neo. I don't think she's ever referred to as Neapolitan in the show, but it, mm. but it is like on record that that's her name. Yeah, I, I guess they the... just like realize it sounds dumb if you actually call her Neapolitan. Well, it looks dumb too. I mean, her, her character, her color scheme is pink, brown, and white, which is why she's called. It works. I I don't like it. I think her hair looks stupid. Um, anyway, she so she is. I don't even know if she's a she. Neo is mute. The thing that was cool about Neo is that she because she didn't talk, she couldn't say anything dumb. Yes, she was the best character because <laughs> for this exact reason. And whenever she fought, she was generally she generally always beat the person she was fighting and 
mid-fight, she would constantly just sort of sit down with a smug eating, shit-eating grin. And well, that was okay, fun. she only did the sit down thing once. To be fair, she she, she didn't make a habit of always doing that. <laughs> no, okay, but I, I feel like she did it in the fight we're about to talk about, at like a couple of times, mm. or at least once. Oh, I I guess she kind of like crouched, but yeah. So, so, but that was the cool thing about her is she managed to be very smug. Like she had a lot of personality despite not speaking, mm. which is like hard to pull off well. But they actually managed to do it with her. Yeah, she was she was a lot of she was a lot of fun. Now, she survived the fight with. Um, uh, the between Roman and Ruby, where Roman got eaten. We didn't. And... We didn't talk about how Cinder lived yet. Oh yeah, sorry. No, yeah. Um, yeah. So Cinder. Well, we, well, we don't okay, know. So how did Cinder survive her crazy fall? She just crawls. She landed in water. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, that's it's how the she cla- survived. It's the classic thing: is that she fell like five hundred meters and landed in water, crawled out of it, whatever cave she was in, which I assume she it, had to like crawl a long way up. <laughs> it, it's just it just cuts to her it's just like it just cuts to her falling in the water and then all the ice is you know like off of her conveniently and it's like oh she's fine yeah I mean, it's, yeah they just wanted to survive she survives could... fucking whatever like yeah this, but this is what I mean we're like why couldn't Roman have survived he was actually fun Cinder sucks <laughs> I didn't yeah. need Cinder back like and like the the logic for who gets to survive what and whatnot, because like Penny is a robot, but everyone considers her definitely dead, even because she got cut in half. Yeah, but it's like, but but she's a robot. Though. She's a robot. Yeah, like yes, you cut her power off for a second, but she's a fucking robot, and she was fun, and now she's dead as well. Like ugh. yeah, but then you can be completely frozen solid and drop into a, a seemingly endless abyss, and then it's fine. You fell in water. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Don't worry, Cinder's still alive. Everyone, hooray! Yeah, we all love her. Sexy evil lady has survived. Yeah, uh, Cinder, Cinder was like vaguely interesting in season four because she got really badly burnt by Ruby, and she like one of her arms became sort of like more like a grim creature's arms, and she couldn't talk properly. Like her voice box was blown out, and she was suddenly very vulnerable and um, really sort of entirely dependent on Salem, and that did kind of make her interesting, but then, like, next season, they just forgot about that. She's she's fine. She can talk. Yeah, she just, like, suddenly can talk normal again, and a guy's like, oh, I guess you're better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cool. at the very beginning of the season. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Glad guys. Glad we spent time on that. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, she survives. She, yeah, she's fine. She, she's just... Now, because she's sort of... At the end of the last season, because she failed, someone says something vaguely, like, about how... To Salem, like, how oh, she failed, and they're, like, saying... And Salem says... Well, I'm not going to go rescue her, despite the fact that oh, like that's in this season. Oh, this uh, this season. Okay, so yeah, they they talk about the idea of going and rescuing Cinder, and Salem's like, no, I'm not going to do that. She's going to have to earn her way back into my good graces somehow. Yeah, because because Salem, the big evil witch lady, seems to think of Cinder as like her superpower daughter or something. Mm. It, it's kind of interesting, except that you know, it's like. It's one of those things where it's like, that could be interesting, but I bet they have no plan for what their relationship is or why it's that way. <laughs> and the other thing to bear in mind is that that Cinder is one of the maidens, and Salem, for whatever her plan is, of the few things we know about what she's trying to do, she really, really badly needs the maidens. And if yeah, Cinder apparently is... Cinder is supposed to become all the maidens at once. Yeah, but if Cinder is killed, then that maiden power goes to some other random person, and... Salem is Maybe sort of back where she started. Maybe she believes in her daughter. Yeah. Maybe she just has faith in, in her daughter. Yeah. Well, either way. She loves her. S- Sal- C- Cinder g- decides she's got to find Ruby and stop Ruby from getting to uh, taking the relic to Atlas. Because Cinder was after the same relic, right? So she's like, okay, th- th- this is her stated plan at the start of the season. Stop Ruby getting to Atlas with the relic. Well, to be fair, we don't hear her really talk about it until later with Miss Malachite, and we just know she's, like, looking for Ruby. Yes. And then later, yes. once her and Neo fight and team up, she explains to Neo that she, you see, Cinder isn't allowed to kill Ruby, and that's no. been established for a little while. Salem said, you can't kill Ruby, I want her alive for some reason. We don't know why. And um, and so Cinder says, well, I guess we should get, we should wait till... Or I, I guess we can cover their thing and then cover the other people. I was going to say, we could we could talk about this bit now because it doesn't actually connect to the rest of the plot. Yeah. yeah. So her, so she goes to a, a new character called Miss Malachite because she's looking for Team Ruby. 
and Miss Malachite is the first heavy woman, kind of a little bit in all of RWBY. Yeah, and yeah. she sits and eats ice cream, and that's her character. Yeah, she's, she's called like an information Miss, broker. She? Yeah, she's called Little Miss, like Little Miss Muffet, because everyone's a fairy tale character, kind of sometimes. But but also, do, and, you, do you get it? Do you get it? But but see, she's not little. She's a no. big lady. She yeah. eat a ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> And so she's looking for Team Ruby, and Little Miss is like, ah, but someone else, oh, someone else was also looking for you, dearie. I'm Southern. I'm from Southern Remnant. She's, and, and, she's and a Southern then, Belle. Yeah, and then Neo shows up, and she's like, hey, it's me. I'm fucking Neo. I'm the best character. I'm here to fight you. And this, and was, a, this was this was the thing. Like, Cube, you're a big fan of Neo, or you were. No. Um, and I remember how pumped you were and most of the people who've been watching it um, were, were when Neo showed up again we were a mix of pumped and terrified because of how the later seasons have been we were like <laughs> please don't ruin our ice cream daughter we <laughs> beg you and what did they do well hey at first <laughs> they have the best fight of the entire season well, they I have will the, take potentially the best fight of like the last three really Oh, definitely. No, yeah, no contest. They have a really good fight. It's, like, well choreographed. It uses the environment in interesting ways. There's, like, these really satisfying hit effects. Mm. It's the best one. And we're like, Neo, you continue to bring the hits literally and figuratively. Yeah, it's like, you, you, you've returned and already you're improving the show. Yeah, and she yeah. wants to fight Cinder because she blames Cinder for Roman dying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then Cinder's like, no, we shouldn't fight. And and then Neo gets all scared because she uses a wind power. She does a windy thing. And then Neo is like, oh, I guess I'm scared of that. And we're like, no, Neo, you're too cool for everything. You can't be scared of anything, Neo. <laughs> and then Cinder's like, we should team up to both kill Ruby. And Neo's like, I mean, she she doesn't speak, but she looks like fine. And we're like, no, Neo, don't. And and Cinder's like, let's talk about it. And then Neo points to her mouth like, ha, ah, get it? I can't talk. And Cinder does like an, oh, right. Like a, wah, wah, mute oh, people can't communicate, even though we have smartphones. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, anyway. And so then we're like, no, Neo. Don't, but don't it, team it was up a with good her. fight, though. It was a really good fight. Because Cinder isn't allowed to kill Ruby, she's like, I'm not allowed to kill Ruby. So you, I'm going to get you to kill Ruby, and then Salem mom definitely won't be mad at me if I just <laughs> made you do it instead. Yeah, this makes no sense. Like, she no, yeah, she's trying... Like, why she's do you trying, think that she wouldn't know? <laughs> yeah, she's trying to get back in Salem's good graces. So she's deliberately going to do the one thing Salem told her not to do. But like, it doesn't count. I, I asked Neo to do it. Yeah. He takes his backsies. <laughs> God. Um, <laughs> Super literal. Yeah. Anyway, so... Me. Yeah, so that, so we, so you, you think that they're going to be part of this season, right? Like, you think... Oh, yeah, because they say, like, we have to get her before she gets the relic to Atlas. Yeah, that's the big so thing. It's like, okay, got, so they have to meet back up before they get to Atlas. Yeah, yeah. So when do we see them next? At the very end. <laughs> After we see- Ruby and team are safely on their way to Atlas, and they don't meet up. And then they're yeah. like, well, I guess we're going to sneak into Atlas. And it's like, okay, it's good to know there was no pressure or anything. Yeah, yeah. They like, yeah. They just, they, they don't even care. Like, they didn't even acknowledge that we didn't manage to stop her from getting to Atlas. Yeah, they're like, fuck, we need a backup plan. Yeah, no, it's just no. It's like, oh, this is fine. Don't worry. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> Now, here's the thing, though. We were, yeah. You were worried that they were somehow going to ruin Neo. Neo. So what happened? <laughs> Rest in peace, Neo. <laughs> so she's like, so Cinder shows up with her new sexy outfit, and Neo's like, shoom, using my illusion power things that are poorly defined that I have. And mm. now she's a big, sexy boob lady that looks like Yang, and she's got giant hair, and she's got like this goofy <laughs> steampunk outfit. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like the weird lapels flopping over her boobs, and then the straps, and then the detached sleeves with the poof, and it's so unbalanced and bad, and it makes it <laughs> sad. They already <laughs> like they they brought her back for Capri one. Garters. They they brought her back for one more shot, like one more scene. And they managed to ruin her in the last, like, at the very last minute. Like, I really yeah. am convinced that they just used Yang's model as a base. And, it looks like, like Yang. And, like, new Neo from that. It's the same hair and the same boobs. Like, 
and then but they put just fucking yay. but they put stupid clothes on her like yeah yeah, and it's like, God, yeah, if, if you want to make her, like, a sexy boob lady now, I mean, she did always have cleavage and stuff, but then it's also super weird that, like, she showed up ten minutes before and didn't have that body type now. Yeah, yeah, like, she, well, yeah, the the, the ending scene is, is Neo turning up with a stolen airship. Now, the, 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 Neo's power, her semblance, I guess, the semblance is are people's powers, everyone has an individual one, her power is that she can shapeshift, she can look like anyone or anything. And it's never been completely. She can also like do illusions around her general area. Yeah. And so sometimes this... she can teleport. The, yeah. No one. The, the thing with the semblance is in Ruby in general is that they are never really well defined. Um, and sometimes they're like very specifically defined, and then they do a different thing. Then they do a different thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> and in Neo's case, it's in that in that last scene, it isn't even just that she can change her own appearance and change little things around her. She makes this airship look like an atlas ship and they're two completely different things and she's changing this so they're really just blowing out the the scope of her powers to something kind of absurd like yeah i like i i call it now she's a walking holodeck like yeah she can she can make things that are physical but it's also illusions because she's a holodeck yeah yeah and it's like this, this is this is another one of these powers where it's like now that you've established she can do this you're going to have to explain why she doesn't do this in other situations, except that No, we that one. don't. You're not our dad. We do what we want. We're Ruby. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, just uh, right. that's that's the end of their story. They, they they seemed like they were going to be important. They weren't. Um, yeah. Because the Their way that side Ru- adventure. The right the way that Ruby tends to work is that an entire season will be spent on one beat, and that's it. Um, yeah. <laughs> like they they literally said we won't have another walking season where they're just walking to Atlas because that would be boring. And I guess they were being sarcastic now. Yeah. But it's like cuz then they did that. <laughs> yeah, they did they did a they did a whole season that was just transitioning from one location to another. And it, it, I mean, I guess at least this time stuff definitely happened, but it didn't actually like change or advance the plot. There's no twisting or turning. I the, mean, the, it, goal, it kind the, of is. We learn things. We learn things, but it, things. We learn things, but it, at no point does what they learn change their plan in any way. Yeah, it like, doesn't affect it, what they're doing at all. No, like it, it doesn't. It doesn't throw up any barriers to what they're doing. It doesn't. It doesn't make them have to th- rethink it or modify it or anything. They just. I mean, they it, do for like five seconds. <laughs> for five seconds, they're, they're kind like, of bummed out, and then nah, they just go back to what they were doing. Never mind. Yeah. So okay, so, yeah, we got to get there. Yeah, we have got to get there. Okay, so we can get there now because I think we've we've covered every, we've, we've covered all the other two bits that are going to show up at the end. Yeah, the main so, team. When when they just got out of the train, uh, everyone's all like, ah, "We had a bad time," and then <laughs> Ozpin is like, "Where's the relic? Where's the relic of knowledge?" And Ruby's like, "I have it," and he's like, "Give it to me," and they're like, "No," and and that was actually a nice moment because Ruby like was hesitant to give it to him, and it's like, "Oh, Ruby's showing some agency." It's been so long since she like did something on purpose, mm. and uh, so I was like, "Oh, that's a nice moment," and then. Uh, Oscar, who, you know, the body that Ozpin is in, he's like, say, J- her name is Jin, you say it, and she'll come out. And and You're then like, what? and then she's like, Jin! And Jin comes out, and she's a big, naked blue woman with all the answers for you. So it turns out that the Relic of Knowledge is kind of like a genie lamp. In that it has yeah, actual... I mean, it looks like a lamp. Yeah, it looks like, well, it is a lamp. But don't, don't, but don't like the lamp in Aladdin. Like It's like, like an actual, like a gas lamp. And I guess it's got like all the fancy stuff on the side and whatnot. It does. Yeah. It's kind of half and half. <laughs> it so so it, it contains a genie, and we don't know if the other three relics also contain a genie because the other three aren't lamps. Yeah. So, well, the, we we haven't even we haven't even seen the other three yet. So who yeah, we have no knows? idea what they do. Yeah, but this genie, the relic of knowledge, has a genie or a jinn called Jin in it. Yeah, it's a jinn named Jin. Who is a sexy blue lady with giant tits? Uh, because of course. And mm-hmm. um, when you use it, time freezes. So yeah, time freezes in, in that the snow stops, but everyone in the general area is allowed to move still. Yeah, is allowed to talk to the djinn. Now, the, her deal is, every 100 years, she will answer three questions completely truthfully. Yeah, and he had told them this before, but he said that all the questions had been used up already, and so yeah. they couldn't use them. But he lied. He lied. They actually, the, none of the questions have been used for this 
allotment of 100 yeah, one things. Has. So, so there's two available. There's two available, yes. Um, so they ask, they, they ask the genie, What's Ozpin hiding from us? Yes, and so begins episode three. Episode three. three. Episode three, <laughs> The Lost Fable. Now, uh... <laughs> here's the thing. The, the thing about Ruby is that they are continually setting up new plot threads that they don't follow up on and posing, posing questions they don't answer. And it's just been more and more crap piling on top of each other as the season has gone on. And this episode was their attempt to answer some of those questions and explain the backstory of the world in a satisfying way. The thing is, mm. all this episode did was just leave you with so many more fucking questions <laughs> and none of the answers make any sense. It's a 24-minute lore dump episode and all of the lore is like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> all of the lore is utterly fucking insane. And completely unintentionally... It puts you 100% on the side of the main bad guy. Yeah. Here, I'm going to try to summarize the general points, like, quickly, and then we can go into more detail. Okay, do it. Because, okay, the basic idea is Ozma and Salem... Ozma is what Ozpin's old name was when he was a human boy. Hmm. Uh, Ozma and Salem were lovers in a previous time where everybody had magic and everything was all mysterious and magical. And the two gods lived on the earth on remnants and they just had pools that you could go visit them at and they would just be chilling in their pools. And so Ozma saves Salem from a tower and then he dies of disease. And so she goes to the God of light and she's like, bring him back to life. I want him. He's my boy. And God of Life is like, no, the balance, it's important, you can't. And then she's like, okay, fuck you, I'm going to go to the God of Darkness. And she's like, God of Darkness, bring my boy back. And he's like, okay, sure, that's fucking fine. And so the God of Darkness brings him back, and then the God of Light shows up, and he's like, no, you can't, stupid. And so there's like a really funny sequence where the God of Light kills him, and the God of Darkness brings him back, and then the God of Light kills him. <laughs> and they're just killing him over and over again. <laughs> and it's like, okay. And remember, um, the God of Light is the good guy. Yeah, the, he's the, the good one. He's he's like all disappointed dad, because he's like, I told you I wouldn't do it, and then you went to mom, because you knew mom would say yes, and fuck you. <laughs> And so he, as his way to say fuck you to Salem, he makes her immortal so that she can never be with Ozma, whom she loves. And so she keeps trying to kill herself, and she can't, because don't forget, th- this is all about the balance. The balance is very important. That's why he couldn't bring Ozma back, so he made a immortal person, just because he doesn't like her. And then so she's like, well, fuck you. I'm going to get all the humans together, and I'm going to kill the you gods, because obviously you're fucking assholes. And so she she goes around and she gathers up all these kingdoms to go fight the gods. And the gods are like, fuck you. And they the dark god snaps his finger and they kill every single human in the entire world except for Salem. Yeah, including people who weren't even fighting them. Yeah, yeah, because she's like, I'll go get more people and bring them back and really kill you. And they're like, you don't get it. We killed literally every single person except you. <laughs> just just to say fuck you, because you're an uppity woman and we hate you. <laughs> and she's like, what the fuck? And, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, so we're out. We decided that this world is dumb and a bad experiment, and we made bad people. And so we're going to leave, and, and on their way out, the... Dark God runs into the moon, I guess, accidentally. <laughs> and because the entire show, the moon has been shattered and it's been like this dramatic visual thing. And then you found out it's because the Dark God yeeted into it and it just like <laughs> broke up. And it's like, oops, so that answers that, I bumped guess. bumped into it on the way out the door. <laughs> it really feels that way. <laughs> and then so it's like, okay, so Salem is here and there's no more humans and she's all alone. And then you see the Dark God go to Ozma in like the afterlife zone. No, the, the light god. Oh, yeah, sorry, the light god. They're easy to mix up because they're both fucking assholes. <laughs> yes, yes. And th- so the light god goes to Ozma, and he's like, Hey, hey, Ozma. So my brother did a real bad thing when he destroyed <laughs> the everyone. I had nothing to do with it. I, there was nothing I could do about it. So I'm going to have you... Eventually humans will come back. 
he just he just drops that. He's like, humans will come back, they'll be fine. And we're like, wait, what? They'll just get better. <laughs> and 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 that's never addressed again. Don't worry about it. They're they'll mm. be back. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so he's like, Ozma, I need you. I'm gonna make these four magical items and throw them around, and I need you to go find them. And then if you bring them together, we'll kill everyone unless they've all learned to get along. You know, kind of like how they did when they all decided to team up and kill us. <laughs> but no, the, the problem is that humans don't get along. And so if we come back and humans aren't all united, you know, which is like a very vague and like impossible thing to ask for, we'll fucking kill everybody. But if you, everyone's united, I guess we'll stay and hang out again. And I know that sounds like two bad options, but <laughs> fuck you. And then Ozma's like, I don't want to do that. I want to be dead. That's <laughs> because then at least I can see Salem. And he's like, no, uh, actually you can't because the thing is that Salem is immortal now. Don't know how that happened. Won't bring that up. <laughs> uh, so, and then Ozma's like, okay, I guess I'll be alive again. <laughs> But, except you don't just get to be immortal like I made Salem. Look, he's not going to explain that part because he's a fucking <laughs> asshole. He just said that I'll make sure that you're, you'll are you be alive until you can gather the four relics for me, but you'll never be alone. <laughs> yeah. And then the way that he's never alone is that he's continuously reincarnated into other men's bodies. It's always dudes. Mm. And he just, he just takes over their fucking life. Mm. And... It's very vague on... It seems to waffle back and forth on whether he subsumes their personality into his own. Yeah. Well, in, 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 this episode in, heavily implies that they are like two separate beings inside the same body and live together. Yeah, that, that he tends to let the people live their own lives and have kids and all that stuff until he needs to go do something and then he has to borrow the body. Well, like, I think he, he like pops into them sometimes when they're older like that. Yeah, yeah. Like he, well, it's there's kind of weird. There's a scene where you see him, like, he's just doing regular family stuff, and then Grim attack, and all of a sudden he's ass-kicking Ozma, like, fighting Grim. Yeah, but then, like, the first body that he reincarnates into is, we have no idea what that guy's life was going to be, because he no. goes and finds Salem in it, and they have kids together and start a whole life together, so who knows what that guy's <laughs> deal was. That poor guy. Yeah, we don't, like, even get the impression that he has his own personality until he's like, what are we doing? And, like, a reflection is like, wait, have you been here the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> you just been hanging out while I, like, fuck my wife and shit? Like, <laughs> Were you watching? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he must have been. It's yeah. his body. <laughs> that's my dick. But, but that's the, also the thing. Oh, yeah, so while Salem was alone, while she was waiting for humanity to come back... Uh, she she kept trying to die and she couldn't. So eventually she went into the dark god's evil dark pools, which are two pools called the Brothers Grim. Get it? Uh, the Grim come from the Brothers Grim. It's two uh, pools. Reference. And, and she throws herself into both of them simultaneously, I guess, somehow. <laughs> like Schrodinger's pools. And she... But instead of killing her, it makes her a being of pure destruction. Dun, dun, dun. That's what they say. That's yeah. what Jin says. So what? And so in the time while Oz was gone, until he shows up again, what was she doing? She was hanging out in a cabin having tea. <laughs> For what must have been thousands of years, because yeah. humanity has reestablished itself and created like new civilizations and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And she's just been chilling in a fucking cabin, hanging out, having a good time, <laughs> not bothering anybody. She's yeah. being a pure destruction. They, 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 refer, they say the locals refer to her as the witch, and no one goes to that building. So she really yeah. has just been leaving everyone alone. <laughs> like... Yeah, she's just been chilling. Like, maybe she does a little magical thing every once in a while. Who knows? But she's not a being of pure destruction in any way. No. So her and Ozma hook back up. Yeah. Um... And they have kids. And he tells her that he has, like, this general quest, but not exactly what will happen when he gets the relics together. And she says that the... Like, the way that... Because Jin is narrating this whole thing, and she's like... Uh, Salem, fearing that Ozma would reject her, blamed the gods for the destruction of humanity. It's like, but they literally did it! <laughs> it <was laughs> he literally them. snapped his finger and every single human died. <laughs> yeah, but the show thinks, the show, the show wants you to think it's Salem's fault because she was uppity. Like, that's... Yeah, because she like rose up against the gods and made them mad. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's like, if they, if they know that humans can't do dick one against them, then it's fucking... <laughs> <laughs> 
they're such fucking assholes. Yeah, either way. So Yeah, so she's yeah. trying to help him unite humanity. And so they're but like it's like a like a evil magical fascist rule. She's like, I'm gonna bring everyone under us and we're gonna make war on the people who won't be united. And so I was like, Okay, I can see why that's not cool, but he also doesn't seem to have too much of a problem with it. No, he goes along with it for quite a while. Like Yeah. Until yeah. they have kids and it turns out their kids are magic. And their kids are also four girls, so I guess the implication is that's where the four maidens come from somehow, yeah. but that hasn't really been explored yet. Yeah, but because they, they also they line up with the colors of the seasons and shit, which is where the maidens get their names. And blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Yeah, it seems pretty clear. But so so she's like, oh, our kids have magic. Okay, well then, fuck uniting humanity because it's fine. We'll just make our own like humanity with our magical babies, and I guess mm. interbreed a lot, and which <laughs> we'll worry about that later. And then he's like, oh no, you seem kind of crazy now, so I'm going to leave with the kids. And then she's like, okay, fuck you, I'm going to kill you. And so she kills Ozma's first body that he reincarnated into. Mm. And I guess maybe the girls, we don't know if, if she killed them. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, we don't see But uh, So ever since then, he's been reincarnating into different bodies, uh, gathering the relics, putting them in these schools and stuff. And Salem has been... Chilling, I guess, making we, plans theoretically. She hasn't done shit. We don't know what Salem has been doing in this time. And be, partly, like, after partly all because this exposition, we have no idea what she wants. This is the thing. We still don't know what her plan is. Even after this law dump episode, it's impossible to know what she's been doing because we do not know what she is trying to do. Yeah, we've like so, asked actual Ruby fans, like who like it unironically, and there's a lot of different answers, and people seem pretty <laughs> confident in their answers, which is the weird thing about Ruby. Yeah, like people yeah. will tell you, like, well, obviously it's this, but then another person will be like, wait, I don't, that doesn't make any sense because they didn't say that. Like, so they'll be like, well, she wants to bring the gods back to kill everybody because she thinks that they'll kill her too, and then another person will be like, but wait, but that doesn't make any sense because they didn't kill her the last time. They, they were just like, fuck you, bitch. And then so yeah. it's like, okay, well, she wants to make sure that he can't, but it's like, but she wants to gather all the relics apparently. So nobody knows. No, yeah, it, it's it's the easiest way to start an argument between two Ruby fans is ask them what Salem's plan is because everyone has a different answer. <laughs> Because yeah, and like she's the main villain. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. We don't know what her plan is, and this is the maybe the biggest issue with Ruby is it's impossible to like write a story or, or do a plot where the where the protagonists have something to work against if you don't know what the villain's trying to do. We don't even know what they're trying to stop, really. Like yeah, and it's like you could do that. Like we just know that she's like fucking people over, and we don't know why. But they act like we know why. Yeah, that's <laughs> and it, I yeah. think in their minds we know why, and we know yeah. what she wants. But but they didn't tell us, and it's not established. No, because because it, it's hard to work out as well. Because like th- these are the options. The only thing we know that Salem is doing at this point now is that she is trying to gather all the relics. Do but- we know that? Well, well, that's what. She, well, that's we know what she, she was... wants. The relics in general. We don't know if she wants all four together. No. Well, yeah. Well, she was trying to get the relic of knowledge through Cinder, at any rate. Yeah. So, yeah, like the, the idea that, like, yeah, she wants to bring the gods back. Why on earth would she, of all people, want to bring the gods back? Like, yeah, the gods are basically like her abusers. <laughs> yeah, they they have done nothing but fuck her over from day one. Yeah, and she knows the... that like she can't do anything against them theoretically. No, yeah, she, she like the only the only the, 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 if she if if it was discovered she had some leverage over the gods now, it might make sense because for the most part, like through that lore episode, you see for most of her history, her goal has been, I'd like to die. Can I just die, please? Yeah, all she wants and, to do is fucking die. Yeah, that's all she wants to do, and they won't let her. And like, but the balance, the, though. This this is the thing. This is where we got to go back. Go back. Going back to the start of this lore episode, it all starts with. Like they 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 established that we're meant to think the god of, the god of creation is a cool dude and the god of destruction is a bad dude. Now, yeah. first of all, you see the god of cre- destruction create things and the god of creation destroy shit. So they have the same powers. Yeah, it's completely arbitrary. It's it's extremely arbitrary. They and and Salem's initial thing of just being like in like grieving for the loss of her lover and going to the god of creation and just asking, can you bring him back? is treated like the most unreasonable, ridiculous thing that anyone's yeah, ever like asked. Yeah, like, she's punished for eternity for it. Yeah, yeah, and because it's she... like... Because she asked She didn't even people. trick... She didn't lie? Yeah, no. she, did, she didn't tell the Dark God that, oh, I totally didn't ask your brother. She just went to another guy to also ask him. Yeah, and then when... And, and then, after watching that Light God 
murder Ozma over and over again. She's angry with him and yells at him, and that's when he turns, he changes her to be immortal, so she can never be with him again. Yeah, and it's like, like such a reasonable reason to be mad at someone because you're like seeing like and and he's like aware each time. He's like, "Where am I?" Ah, and yeah. she's like, "Ozma." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does like the, the light god does this awful thing. She's angry at him and yells at him, and it's okay. You're going to be punished. By living forever in a horrible way, away, away from the person. Though he does imply, like, if you, if you learn your lesson, we'll make you unimmortal, which, yeah, you know, what, presumably what? is like, I guess she's supposed to come back groveling to them, like, I've learned the importance of death, please, like, uh, I'm subservient to you. <sighs> it's so fucking creepy. And anyway, but anyway, so when she, when, then when she, yeah, when she, gra- she grabs all those other kingdoms and makes them fight the gods, yeah, one, she's united humanity. To yeah, the the humans all being wiped out isn't that big of an issue in that scene for the god of light, and he's he's the one who's fucking obsessed with the balance, like yeah, and then he's killed, just like oh fine. oh my god killed everybody sorry yeah bro did it, it, it the the diff- the difference in the way that he's played in the scene with where they kill all of humanity and the scene where he talks to Ozma, like it really is stark like because the scenes are right next to each other it really is stark in the way that like. In the scene where the all humans are killed, he is very much this aloof, separated, distant god who's going, oh, this didn't really work out as an experiment. And then when he's talking to Ozma, he's talking about humans like he just fucking, he loves humans so much and he wants so badly to be back with them and blah, 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 blah. Like it doesn't... It, it's, it's like he's supposed to be this disappointed dad kind of figure, but like the lack of internal logic makes him seem like this fucking insane, like manipulative asshole. But yeah. it's, he's not as knowledge. The show doesn't like tell you that. No, like, yeah, it, it feels like the it, show it, wants it, you to think that he was in the right, but he's clearly it, fucking nuts. Exactly, yeah, and he, and he's like, uh, it just it, it it looks like he's lying to Ozma. Like that's that's how that's how it comes across. But you can tell yeah, the show. No, doesn't I mean like the immediate reaction is what? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but but the show like the show what clearly wants you to think the light guard's the good dude. Yeah, and again, yeah, like you said, those two options that he gives them—if we bring the gods back—either we kill all of human, all of humanity again, or we come and live with you again. And why would you and want? All they did was of those hang out things? in their pools, and for some reason, nobody went to them ever except for Salem. I guess because everyone else knew that they were fucking assholes. Yeah, it's just like don't go to those guys. They're pricks. They'll they'll do something awful to you. Like yeah, yeah. Why why so, would you yeah, want these them are around? Both bad options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, like, again, we're supposed like this... to think that the light god is a good option. Oh, also, by the way, Faunus, if you were ever wondering where Faunus <laughs> came from, where these, where this other species of magical animal people came from, you finally find out this episode. Ozma's reincarnated, and he's like, and he looks around, and also Faunus were here now, and he's like, that's weird. And where so, were the Faunus? Glad... <laughs> they were in cages. <laughs> like, that's right, the, yeah, people the, were keeping the, them in fucking cages. There's one shot of a bunch of Faunus angry in cages, and they go... And there were strange new creatures, and that's it. <laughs> that's that's yeah, the entire backstory like, of the Faunus. Of all the things that you could have actually explained that we were wanting explained. <sighs> but nah. Nah, nah. So they learn all of this shit, and in the end, they're like, well, I guess let's keep taking the relic to Atlas, because we don't have anything else to do. <laughs> mm. Well, the, the other thing that you learn at the end is um, you see... You, you see uh, over the eras different versions of Ozma asking Jean different questions about like where are the other relics da 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 and the last question you see him asking that episode is how do I kill Salem and the Jean yeah. says you can't you can't and we discover that Ozma has no plan yeah they're like so he what's has... your plan then and he's like I don't have one <laughs> Which, like, again, like, in a show that felt planned, that could be an interesting twist. Yeah. But the fact that it's a show that clearly has no plan in itself, and then the main protagonists <laughs> also have no plan that they're following, <laughs> and nothing matters, and who gives a fuck? <laughs> it's just, it's great because, yeah, like, it, the, the show, the show's admitting we had no plan. I'm not surprised he has no plan. How could he? You've written yourself into a corner. Like That's the one true thing he said. That's the one thing he said that they don't have to retcon. <laughs> yeah, is that he doesn't have a plan. Uh, There's which, no plan. Which, again, like, he's been so... He's always... The way that Ozpin Os- had been played up to this point was constantly confident. He's always... You know, everything is, a, a, everything is proceeding according to plan. Da, 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 da. Yeah. When this entire time he's just, I guess, been winging it. 
and no, yeah, there's been all nothing. of the moves he's been making have made no, don't actually make any sense because he doesn't. He doesn't have a plan. He doesn't have a plan. Like, like he's. I mean, he got... I, I guess until the fall of Beacon, theoretically, he might have had. You could say that his plan was just, you know, keep the relics safe. Don't let Salem get him, which would yeah. be fair enough. Yeah, but but in this in this thing, he's established like, what's your plan for killing Salem? Yeah, and up to this point, that hasn't really been anyone's goal. Like, no, yeah, that's the funny thing is like they've been being trained to be hunters to kill Grimm. And now they like have suddenly found out Salem exists. They found they've like seen an image of her for the first time at the end of Volume Five, and now it's like all these the character's entire life goal because she seems like a final boss kind of person. So now they yeah. have to kill her. Yeah, even though there isn't, as far as we can, we've established there isn't really a way to kill her. Yeah, and, and now we know that there's no known way to kill her. But and, like, and we, we don't. Just, we got to fucking do it though. Yeah, because I mean, I, mean I, I guess yeah. Okay, she destroyed Beacon. But without knowing what her plan is, we still don't really know. <laughs> like, this sort of seems we like... We this... don't understand what the stakes are for, like, the rush or anything. No. Because, not... like, it seems like you'd want to play it safe now, you know, like, kind of hunker down. Because, like, if you can't kill her and you just know that she's going to be attacking these places. Mm. But no, they're, they're like, we need to go kill her right away. There's no time. Yeah, yeah. They're, all of a sudden, they're in a rush to get Atlas, and it doesn't... And it's like, before what happens? <laughs> yeah, before she does what? We don't know what she's trying to do. It, al- it almost seems like if you sat Salem and Ospen down, they might have been able to figure something out. <laughs> like, yeah, but he ran like, off. <laughs> like, like de- depending on what it was Salem wants to do, because it, it, she's not trying to unite humanity anymore, or, no. like, or take over the whole world or anything. It seems like she's explicitly trying to... I, I mean, yeah, maybe she's trying to kill everyone, but, like, why? Maybe, maybe she is trying... No, because cause her song says she's going to divide them, tear them apart. Yeah, yeah, that's like... But it's like... Is, the, the, okay, the trouble, the trouble with the Ruby music, and there's a lot of Ruby music, is it's written by a different guy who, as far as we know, is just making up his own better version of Ruby. It, it's like they give him a general idea of what's going down, and then he like makes up a headcanon version of it that's like cooler a lot of the times than what's actually <laughs> happening. Yeah. Because like, Ruby has this dead mom that's theoretically really important to her, and in the songs it's like this thing that she's super torn up about, but then in the show it's like, oh, I, I was a baby and I don't really remember her at all. And yeah. she, like, never comes up, almost. And mm. it, so it's like, we never know how much of what's explicitly said in the songs is canon. Mm. Kind of like the Bumblebee thing, where they were like, no, it's, it's gay, but it's not it's not real gay. No, no, it's actually happening. So, yeah, sometimes you get the idea of what's happening from Jeff, and it's like, nah, he's full of it. <laughs> <laughs> from his music. But, yeah, so she, theoretically, she wants to divide people. Yeah, theoretically, she's trying to divide humanity. So you could sort of maybe say that She's trying to divide humanity and get the relics together so she can call the gods down. Humanity will be divided. They get wiped out. But what good does that do her? Why would yeah, she want that? Yeah, just as a fuck you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but like, so what? She just gets to be alone again? Like, yeah, and then will humanity just come back again? Because they did, already did that once before. Yeah, like... <sighs> so, it, it, what do you this, want, this the, Salem? <laughs> yeah, like, you, 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 we, we had the big Lord Dump episode that was meant to explain everything, and it's only made everything more confusing. Yeah, and there's so many, like, elements of it that the characters should be bringing up and asking about, but they don't. Like, because no. there's, go- there's these pools that if you get dipped in one, you're immortal, and if you get dipped in the other... I mean, the other is where all Grimm come from. Yeah. But, like, nobody has brought up, like, so where are these pools, then? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, still on the, they're still on the planet somewhere, one assumes. And no yeah, one's ever found so them. it's like, can you be immortal? Can you, you know, go to the source of all Grimm and fucking nuke it? Why didn't Oz go to one of those pools when he was in one of those bodies? So, uh... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. They just, they just, they've established all of this dumb lore. They've confused all of the characters' goals. I feel like this is going to end up being a five-hour podcast now. <laughs> well, we're, we're an hour and 21 in. Oh, yeah. We got to <laughs> get to the fucking Dementors, though. Yeah, we do. Well, that's next. It's so frustrating. This this episode was just so fucking frustrating because and you could like feel how proud they were of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Now they 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 think this shit is great. They, they they this is the thing. They most of the time when you see Miles or Kerry talking on like social media, and that it's usually Miles. And Miles seems really proud and very satisfied with how Ruby's going. Yeah. I don't. Know. <sighs> we sort of wondered if Kerry was or wasn't, but a while ago he tweeted a gag about how he still laughs at the word poop or something, but. In it, he mentioned that he makes a show that influences millions. Millions of people. 
I Depot. influence the lives of millions of people. It's like, it's dude. Like, okay, calm down, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real movie. <laughs> It's a very bad anime show. But yeah, and it's like and it seems like the fan a lot of the fans loved episode 3. And yeah. I think it's just because yeah. like a lot of fancy stuff was happening and it feels kind of epic. But when you really think about everything that happened in it, it's just like my thought always comes back to like a teenager making up lore for his D&D campaign that doesn't really matter. It's exactly like that. Like the 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 writing of Ruby is on that level. Yeah, it's like, hey, if I keep adding things, oh, now there's four relics, not just four maidens, and it's mm. like, oh, isn't that cool, guys? And mm. the guys are just like, let's have a cool fight though. It's just this amateurish writing where they're making all the mistakes that a young writer would make. But they're adults. And, and, and amazingly, over the course of six seasons, they are not learning. They are not getting any better at this. Like, at all. But I mean, again, like, why would they need to get better? People love it. Yeah, yeah. They, oh, that's the thing. They, they fucking, they think they're nailing it, as far as we can tell. Yeah, it influences millions. They, they were At least on season four, they admitted they thought they got overambitious, which I'm still not sure what that means in terms of what happened in season four. Where, like, yeah, like yeah, said, like, overambition is... Three characters set at home. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But the next thing that happens is something they were very, very proud of because they've been waiting to do it since before Volume 1. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so what happens, Fiend? So the, what happens is, let's do a two-part episode about something completely irrelevant. Let's find a spooky house. Yeah, they find a spooky house. So they, they in, while walking, they hit a, what, a deserted um, village, like a Farm. tiny village. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like eight it's like houses. 20 people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they hang out there, and while they're there, they're so, they are sort of questioning, well, now that we now like, like, Crow is really busted up about this because he found out that Oz is a liar. Oh, by the way, Oz has, um, re- has because he's so ashamed of the fact that he has no plan, he has retreated into the back of uh, Oscar's mind and isn't coming out again. I was waiting to hear if you were going to say mind or balls. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop He's saying balls. deep in my balls. The, the, ball, the balls is a Discord joke that, that, that Osman lives in people's balls. Um, yes. Yeah. But there. yeah, so he's he's like, I'm I'm in my room. I've locked myself in my room. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm real sad. Yeah. So, so Os, Ospin isn't there to explain anything to them conveniently. And mm. Crow is like, my I've been risking my life for years for I don't even fucking know. Yeah. And Cr- Crow has an alcohol problem. And now it's a problem. Because before mm. he was like the funny drunk. But mm. now that he's depressed, the characters are really mad at him for drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the first point, the first time when his alcoholism is maybe somewhat justified. He yeah, it's like is... he gets shit-faced once because his entire life has been turned upside down and Ruby is like, fuck you, Uncle Crow, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you have uh... a disease... <laughs> Like this should like this should be a cool moment in terms of his character that like he he's like he should be in the middle of this massive existential crisis, and he kind yeah, of and is. It's like him understanding that like his drinking is actually a problem would be a fair enough plot point if people were being like supportive of him and shit. Or if they really needed him to do anything, but they don't. Yeah, and... like his his alcoholism never becomes like a oh we we got in trouble because you were drunk and that's why yeah. we couldn't fight the grim. No, no he's just... like. In their downtime, he gets drunk. Yeah, like li- literally in this 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 little two episode arc, they are doing nothing. They're resting, and he gets drunk, and they're mad at him for getting pissed while <laughs> while they're just like, sitting I around doing nothing. I guess he was supposed nothing. to be on watch, uh, yeah. but he's fucking sad. Yeah, he's really sad. <laughs> and I guess in Ruby a just does be way. like, "You can talk to us, Uncle Crow," but mm. it's still it's still being bitches. And also, he was getting super drunk partly because he was under the, the influence of Dementors. Yes. Okay. So the thing about this town is it's weird and spooky. They can't work out where everyone is. Like there aren't any corpses around. I don't think. No, there's corpses. Remember, they find the corpses in the beds, and then he's oh, like, right. they're yeah, all people, like that. So everyone died in their beds. Everyone just died in their beds. And, it's so spooky, scary. And what's happening? And this this sort of made sense in the context of the last episode. Everyone is sort of going, "What the fuck are we even doing? Like, yeah. why are we even bothering?" So you and think it, that they're just like sad about that, but then like they they're like too sad, and then they're like, they, "I'm just so tired." They start talking in like real monotones, and everyone sort yeah, of talks. And then they about, don't have they, the highlights in their eyes, so you know shit's up. <laughs> they talk about the idea of like. This is my favorite bit. They talk about the idea, of like, why don't we just throw this relic down a w- down this well? Because, like, if we take it to Atlas, 
it'll probably just get attacked, whereas Salem might never, ever find it if it was just at the bottom of this random well in a random town in the middle of nowhere. And then Ruby comes to her senses and goes, no, no, we can't do that. But hang on, go back. That was actually a good idea. (laughs) Yeah, the thing is that, like, at first Weiss broaches it by, hey, why are we going to Atlas? And we're like, yeah, fucking why are you? (laughs) Like... We have guessed that they want to protect the relic there, but yeah. that's like, they haven't really talked about it. Ospin no. just said, we should take the relic to Atlas. That's all he said. Yeah. So when she's like, why are we going to Atlas? We thought it was like this big revelatory moment of like, yeah, yeah, they don't have a good reason. And then and it's like, the... no, we have to do it. Yeah. We have to do it because the guy who now is not talking to us because we found out he's a liar told us to. And yeah, that remains and the motivation for doing The guy who canonically it. has no plan what... Whatsoever said that yeah. we should do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, re- and that, for the rest of the season, that remains the reason they're doing it is because the guy with no plan told them they should do that. Yeah. Like, so <sighs> you need to remember that later with the things they do is that they never get any more justification for what they're doing other than it's a thing Ozpin told us to do at one point. Yeah. So, so, so she's like, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'll just drop it in this well and then we'll just leave it here and then Salem probably won't even find it. And everybody's like, no, I can't do that. But she drops it anyway, accidentally, and then she sees a spooky scary at the bottom of the well. And it turns it's out... Down there. So they, they, they jump down the well to get the relic back. And beneath this well is a sewer system suitable to a city of, I don't know, 10,000 people or so. It's a giant-ass video game sewer, <laughs> waterworks, everything. For a, for a town with eight buildings. Like, this this town would not have running water. They would have, like, yeah, fucking... you would have like, an outhouse. Yeah, yeah, but no... Giant fucking sewer system. Connected to the well, by the way. So, yeah, yeah. how is that well any good for getting water? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to pump up that poopoo water. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go to the shit well? I need another bucket of shit. Oh, it's so goofy. Ugh. Video games! <laughs> they go down there. Now, Ruby is now immune to whatever this mood-altering thing that's happening is. She, she's, she's, like, weirdly resistant, and we never learn why. Yeah. I oh, guess maybe because of the silver eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ruby Which has we'll silver eyes, to. by the way. Ruby she has, has special silver eyes, and dis- sometimes it lets her do, like, a weird, like, boom. Yeah, she gets But it's only to happened the- twice, and only yeah. one time did it do anything. Yes, yes, yeah. She gets to, she, she has a, she has a deus ex machina power that can destroy Grimm. It can do whatever you want it to do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so. So what's on, what's in the well? Down the well is this thing... What did they call it? They call them the apathy, and they make you apathetic. It's a grim that has the unique effect of making people apathetic. So what happened to this previous town is this thing showed up, and everyone just stopped caring about everything and went to bed and died. And it's great because they find that out later because Maria is reading, like, the history of the town that a guy wrote all of in a book. <laughs> and, like, she's specifically, like, reading it from beginning to end. And I guess she doesn't she doesn't want spoilers, so she doesn't skip <laughs> to the end to find out how everyone died. Yeah, so they're, like, they're, they're trying to figure out what happened to this town. And Maria's like, no, I am reading this in order. I'm reading it for not our bedtime ahead. story. <laughs> And so, yeah, she's like, I'm starting with volume one. And she's, like, slowly going through various volumes of it. And then, like, yeah. at the end, she's like, I found out what happened at the end of the last volume. Who would have after, guessed? After they defeated this Grimm. So, yeah, they, they Ruby's having real trouble getting everyone to actually fight. There is, there, is a, there is a beautiful shot of, like, Blake about to be eaten. And she's just this sort of lying on the fun. ground, stare, staring into camera going, this is fine. Yeah, so the apathy are like re-deads. Like, yeah. it's very much like an Ocarina of Time when you go into the Kakarika well and there's re-deads. Yes. It's just that. Yeah. And and so they even do like a screech and then you like stop because you're so, you're frozen because re-deads. But Maria is also unaffected by this thing. And or at she... least resistant like Ruby. Yeah, I and Maria, Maria is resistant like Ruby, so she somehow knows that Ruby has silver eyes. Because this is the thing, Maria, Maria is this old lady who's wearing these goggles, like these technical goggles, and, and we, we get to see things from her perspective finally, and she sees everything in black and white. Just or, yeah, it's in like blue tones, because it's, they're blue because of technology. It's, yeah. You know, like Tron. Yeah, Maria. No, but, but see, uh, Ruby uses her powers, but like shittily. Yes. She's like, oh no, all my friends are going to die and be killed by these Dementors, and so she goes, bah, with her eyes, and it like kind of burns them, but not so good. Mm. And then Maria's like, Ruby, what color are your eyes? <laughs> and Ruby's like, silver. 
And Maria goes, what, is, what did she instruct her to do? She, it's like, think she about says, your friends. She says, don't think of them. Yeah. She, she, she's like, okay, don't think about any of this. You got to get your mind on. And she's like, you have friends, family, think of them. And it's really funny because you see Ruby look off screen and Maria says, don't think of them. And I and like <laughs> you're supposed to guess that she was looking at the Grim, but I really thought she was looking at like Blake and people who were dying. So, so it's really funny when Maria's like, "Don't think of them. Think of your friends." It's just ba- yeah, it's just badly directed as usual. Yeah, and so it turns out that Ruby can use her Deus Ex Silver Eyes by thinking it's not happy thoughts. It's not a Patronus. No, okay, no, it's, not, it's not, not a Patronus, Patronus that you use against the mentors. You it's, have it's, to think <laughs> about life and how happy it makes you, but yes. like the like how precious and cool it is. Yeah, you got, you got to think about your friends. It's about friendship. You got to think positive thoughts. Not Patronus. It's not a Patronus. It's, it's, it's just not a, a Patronus because it's about life. It just so happens that everything you need to think about to think about the value of life is positive thoughts. So, bear in mind. The first time we ever saw Ruby use the Silver Eyes, and entirely involvoluntarily, was when she was, w- watched one of her friends die. Yeah, like, she saw she... one of her friends be murdered, and then she goes, "Pira!" Mm. That's the Japanese version. And then, and so, and then she does big Silver Eyes, and then it turns a dragon to stone and burns half of Cinder, I guess. Yeah, and and wipe, and, and temporarily wipes out all of the Grim that were attacking Beacon. Yeah, and she's like, fuck! And so we're supposed to think that during that, she was concentrating intensely on the value of life and happy thoughts and how great it, the life is. Yeah, because it, it, like in this season, it's established that the silver eyes don't work if she gets distracted by negative thoughts, including, later on... Yeah, one we'll, of the we'll, negative we'll thoughts we'll is when we'll, Pira died. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Okay, yeah. so, <sighs> so anyway, anyway, she she silverizes the Dementors with her Patronus, and uh, they all die, everyone wakes up and is fine. They Maria... don't all die, remember that like they get super burned, but then they're running out, and but there's more Dementors, and then Weiss is like, I'll fucking get them, and then she throws all the alcohol and sets it on fire, even though she could just do that with her magic. Oh, that's right, yeah, okay, yeah. She, she... It's all like, oh, wow, so badass, she she lit a fire, a small <laughs> fire. <laughs> it's like, she can, she can shoot fire! <laughs> she can shoot fireballs! She can summon giant monsters, she can do so much random shit. Yeah, but, no, but only when they feel like it. Yeah. Anyway, so they, so then they're leaving, and as they're leaving, Maria finally gets to the end of the book and explains, and this is like, I can see why they might have wanted to establish this early, like this might have been an early idea, because this was actually a kind of cool idea. So the issue with small settlements is obviously attracting Grimm, right? And Grimm come when you have negative thoughts, or you're panicked, or you're scared. But there is this one Grimm that can suppress those sort of thoughts and make everyone kind of calm. So this hunter had the idea of just trapping one and sticking it in the well underneath the city to keep everyone's sort of calm and level so that the Grimm wouldn't be attracted to the village. Yeah. Unfortunately, all of the, the rest of this Grimm's family showed up and it made everyone so apathetic they all died. And that was what yeah. went wrong. Oops. But the thing to bear in mind, though, is that this is the first any of these hunters have ever heard of this type of Grimm. Yeah, none of them have any idea that this kind of thing is a possibility, even though they like went to school specifically for that. And apparently it's something that's known enough that these like random farmers knew all about them and how to use them. Yeah, yeah, and, and tried to use them in that way. But uh, uh, to them, this is new information. So what does Maria do with the book full of all this information? Blech, uh, blech, and she throws <laughs> it, and she throws it into the snow in the woods, and they but, say, fuck that shit. They, they like they, they they wanted to have a dramatic end shot where like the the book lands in the snow in front of the camera while the their car like how dare they have done such a transgression against humanity? <sighs> but it like but no, that was that's that was important information, information though. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck learning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's but, the end of that two episode arc. Um, but yeah, it to, makes like her doing that action makes more sense when you know it was never supposed to connect to anything or matter because it was just an idea they've had floating around since hmm. before the show started. Mm. But it's also like when Miles talks about this idea, he's like, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to combine the town from Serenity with, uh, and, and then Carrie reminded me of that, Redeads. And it's so weird to hear someone be so proud about like, so this idea is just a copy of this and this, and that's what we did, and it's really good, and I'm really proud of it. It's like, that's, what? No, dude, no, 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 like you don't, that's not, that's not how this works. 
That's not usually the the things that you get super proud of. <laughs> you, like, yeah, like you, you, you're allowed to sort of talk about the the things that you've liked and how you reincorporated them. But if you have just directly ripped them off as much as you did, you don't get to be proud of that. Yeah, like I hadn't like, even thought about the Serenity Town thing. It's like, and it's like, oh yeah, they do come there, and everyone's just lied down and died because of you know. But it was drugs instead of Dementors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just guys, come on. Like, they, they're uh, just so amateurish. They just, they, 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 like, they're so amateurish that they don't recognize that this is not a good thing to just say, yeah, we just sort of ripped off these two other ideas. <laughs> like, it's so, it's so uh, teenager, anyway. it's so weird. So that's the end of that. Yeah, so that, that's the end of that, none of that matters, fuck it. But, like, so Crow was drinking heavily because he was under the, you know, influence of these Dementors, but they're still super pissed at him about it. <laughs> and, like, shitting on him. And so it's, it's weird. But then, oh, the other thing Maria tells them while they're traveling the rest of the way to Argus, which is this, this port that they need to go to to get to Atlas, is, like, Ruby's like, how do you know about how to use the silver eyes? And she's like, I had silver eyes. Mm. And we were so excited in the Discord because she doesn't have eyes now. So we thought, oh, shit, does silver eyes burn your eyes out? Because at least, like, that would be a consequence that you have to face for using them. And that's, like, kind of hardcore. Because like, the problem with Silver Eyes up to this point has been, like, what, so you can just use them whenever you want? Yeah, it's super OP. And, yeah. and like, this, the entire theoretical premise of this show used to be having cool fights, like, cool kinetic fights against monsters. Mm. And the power of Silver Eyes is to completely not have a fight, as we yeah. will see at the finale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just, like, you just get to wipe everyone out in, one, in like, like, one AOA and you're done. And yeah, which, so at least is, if it was like a, oh, I, I, I can only use them when it's absolutely necessary and then it's a big deal because they're going to be like burning my eyes out, then yeah. that'd be kind of okay. Yeah, but no. No, Sorry. it turns out that we we see a big flashback episode thing of Maria and she's like yeah, fighting not, a Grim and she's not very good at it even though she's like the super famous hunter apparently. Mm. She was and, the Grim Reaper. Yes, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Mm. Oi, love, it's me, Tuck. I'm oh. the new one-off villain for this flashback, love. And the reason why Master told me to kill you is because of your eyes. So, so if you're wondering why Mary's doing that accent, um, there was a, another... Oi, my name's Tuck. Another irrelevant flash, like, episode. There's just a flashback to explain what Maria's deal was. And she, we see her losing her eyes to a crocodile lady faunus called Tok, who has what... It's somewhere halfway between a Cockney accent and a bad Australian accent. Oi, governor. I really do think that she wanted to be Australian, but all she knew was Tracer. All, 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 yeah, all, all she... Or maybe all she it's just ever, supposed to be Cockney. It's hard I, to say. I, to, to, it, it, sounds, it sounds to me like a, like a character from a Guy Ritchie film, like someone doing an impression of Jason Statham. Yeah, it's I, just... I, it's, it's bad. It's it's extremely. <laughs> and she has goofy. big. She has big, really goofy looking metal teeth. Like, yeah. and instead of looking like teeth or looking like a bear trap, they just look like someone like scribbled like like a zigzag. <laughs> and and it's supposed to be all dramatic. She's like, "You're the Grim Reaper, and these are the last sixty seconds of your life." And and she shows her stupid teeth. <laughs> It's it's this common thing with Ruby. When at the end of every episode of Ruby, whenever they introduce something new, they always show the concept art for it. And it's yeah. a really common thing that the concept art always looks so much better than how you actually executed it. <laughs> That's the thing about Ruby is like it really feels like there's a lot of artists on the show that are doing their best, and oh yeah, feel bad they're, they're, for them because they're working so hard. <laughs> yeah, but from from what we know of Ruby, the timelines are horribly mismanaged to the point where episodes are being finished as they are being put up. Like, yeah, and it's it, like, so you have a week, and they're also working on Genlock simultaneously, and mm. it's, you know, like an unusually small animation team. So it's like, they're clearly all doing their best, but then some stuff just, like, you can tell there was no time. Yeah, Like, yeah, when Ruby and, dramatically uses her eyes, it's this really bad gradient that just kind of gets bigger, and mm. it looks like shit, and it's like, you just know that it was like, we have five minutes, make her do the silver eye thing as best you can in After Effects. Yeah, and it's like, it's, it's, it's uh. always like, as... The, it always seems the last two seasons has always been, seemed to be like the, as it gets to the crunch at the end of the season, everything gets shittier, and we see less. We actually start to see fewer fights, and I'm willing to bet it's because they just don't have the time to animate that shit. Like, yeah, because because 
like the animation early on in the season was like, oh, they're being pretty impressive. But then mm. you get to episode three, which required so many assets and so many environments and so many different kinds of people and animations. And it's like, what a waste. Like, a they, they must have waste. used so much time on this and it was all nonsense. Yeah. And it could have been put towards, like, the cool plot relevant stuff or fights. A, just a cool fights. This is a cool fight show. This is all this show was ever meant to be. Uh, yeah, you, but no longer. No. Now we're about the lore, man. Yeah, the, the the amazing story. So, okay, so they get to Argus. Is it Argus? Argus, yeah. Argus. It's a city. It's a. I I thought this was Atlas at first. I was very confused, but it's no. It's 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 like technically part of Atlas. Um, it's... No, it, it's it's technically still part of the continent they're on, Mistral. But it's like Atlas has a big military base there. Mm. So so they have like a lot of control over it, I guess. Yeah, and they're also they have a setup for defending it against Grimm as well. So they're like they're essentially the town's like protection, I guess. Yeah, and and the idea is that because they have that military base there, because Atlas is on military lockdown, they think that they can go up to the base and be like, "Hey, we need to get to Atlas," and the, they'll be like, "Okay, we'll let you through. We'll put you on a boat to Atlas or whatever." Mm. And, and and they have a few things that would make them think they might have a way in. So Crow is on good terms with this General Ironwood who's like the head of the Atlas military and also yeah, Weiss is... they're both is, in the same like secret club. Yeah, and Weiss is... Well, Weiss, apart from being an Atlas citizen, she's the daughter of the, the Snee Dust Company which sort of is like the de facto... What's the, the company that's actually in charge of Atlas? Yeah, they're like superpower corporation. Yeah, But yeah. It, it's so weird because it's been... You know, like, they com- they constantly forget how long it's been. The fact that it's been... Uh, presumably two years, at least one, but all the characters are two years older than they were before. Mm. But so, like, Atlas has not allowed a single person or civilian in or out for two years. Yeah, which, two like, years. There would be riots in the streets. Like, shit would be fucked. Yeah, they're, they're like, <laughs> like, like they're, even they're... even capitalism is like like they can't trade in and out. <laughs> yeah, like like we, like trade wars are a thing that cause capitalist societies to lose shitloads of money like <laughs> this would be a huge problem yeah they're they're atlas should be super fucked also like the schnee the schnee dust company it basically means the rest of remnant has not had any dust for yeah. two years because all the dust comes from atlas so P- apparently yeah I, I guess yeah i mean we don't actually know but that's where the schnee dust company is so yeah Anyway, so it, it's yeah, it, it's a, it makes no sense. But so mm-hmm. they they figure that they can go up to the military base, explain the situation, and they'll let them in. But unfortunately, the military base is run by a funny little fascist lady, and her name's Cordovan. Her two fucking absurd goof guards who just don't fit into any of these scenes. Yeah, they're from a different show, but they've decided yeah. to come to Ruby. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> They're like, hup, 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 hey! They're like two things out of a fucking Gary's Mod video, but the, and everything else is. And meanwhile, this lady is a tiny fascist, which that's really that's really funny in today's climate. Fascism, yeah, hey. it's presented as a, a funny thing. She's like, oh, glorious military, ha ha ha! But then she's also fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, so she, it's like, how? Are, what are we supposed to think about this character? Is she the funny, ha ha, fascist, or is oh, but, but she's she not like racist. a racist threat? But she's not racist because she's only like racist towards uh, Blake for being a faunus, and the faunus aren't a separate race. Oh, that's right. She's remember, remember guys. Remember, remember guys. It's, the, not it's, a race. it's not a race analogy. It's not a race analogy. It's never, never, never was a race analogy. Species. Even though it's, really it's a species that you can hide under your hat. <laughs> so she's like, "Fuck you guys! I'm not letting you into Atlas. If if Miss Schnee wants to come to Atlas, she can, but only her. And fuck the rest of you." I mean, and this is the thing, again, okay, give Weiss the relic, she takes it to Atlas. No, they promised they'd never break up again. And honestly, <laughs> I, can, I can understand not letting, not wanting her to go alone, because then, like, her dad would probably fucking lock her up somewhere, and then yeah, but yeah, there's being there's abused that, at home. Again. There's that, I suppose. But, but it's not like they ever, like, acknowledge that that's a possibility. Like, yeah, it's just like we'll never break up again. We, it's like, okay, so okay, cool. So you're you're putting friendship above what you what you think is the fate of the world. Yeah, something though. that you're willing to do some pretty crazy shit for later. Yeah, and it's also also she like they were together at Beacon for what maybe a couple months, and then they were apart for two years. Like they really. They act like they're these, like, destiny, we've had such a strong bond and done so much together, but yeah. they re- 
they've spent way more time apart than together in this show. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to tell how long they were at Beacon before the fall of Beacon. Yeah, because the, the timeline's very murky. But they, they, never, they never get out of first year, so it was less than a year. Yeah, it was, it was definitely less than a year. I want to say half a year at most. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, because they like never no, hit the, winter or whatever. No, they're the best of friends. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so it's friendship. Um, so now that we're back in Argus, we've caught up with J and R. Yeah, means, they're 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 at John's sister's house, and it's yeah. and it's kind of nice because John's sister has a wife, so it's like, oh hey, they're actually like letting gay people exist in Ruby. Yeah, that's and, nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that was they're, positive. They're not, you know, major characters or anything, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, that, that, that's that, that's that's a positive thing. On the other hand, John is back. Yeah, so John, if you don't watch Ruby, John is the main character of Ruby, <laughs> and it's very strange because you'd think that Ruby would be the main character of Ruby, but John always he gets all these character moments and all this screen time and his entire shtick is that he sucks at fighting and he sucks at being a leader and he sucks and but no he's actually a decent leader though he's learning nah just kidding he sucks lol and his character is just that over and over and over and yeah but everyone loves him everyone assures him he's very important he's he's essentially and, and the funny thing is he's voiced by miles luna Yes, so he's so, voiced by one of the two head writers. Yeah, he's he is, it's, he like, I don't know if he was actually intended to be this way, but he has all the characteristics of a Mary Sue. Yeah, he's Marty very Sue. much he's uh we always call him like an isekai protagonist, like <laughs> because he's he's this character that he is introduced in volume one. He doesn't know anything about the world he's in. Yeah, all the girls for some reason are like attracted to him. Like, actually, magnetically by the universe. It's like, Weiss is walking. It's like, oh, it's John. And then Pierre is walking. He's like, oh, it's John. Mm. And, and, it's, and he's just, he's so important for no reason. Yeah, there is there is no justification in, in the show for him being at Beacon, staying at Beacon, anyone yeah, giving a shit about him. he cheated to get in, he, and he doesn't we we, know anything about being a hunter or how to do anything. And he's not trying hard either. Like, he's not making an effort to be a better hunter. Yeah, like you see like, him falling asleep in class all the time and shit. Like he just he's he's oh, and, he's just and, and, and look, fucking worse. <laughs> he's he's just he's just a shitty like he he's a shitty male character who gets all of takes all of this screen time away from ostensibly the leads. And then in season 3, one of the female characters gets fridged for him. Like Yeah, like, like there's, there's this hyper competent girl named Pierre that's on his team, but he's the leader. Because this is whatever, and um, and so she dies to like make him really sad, mm. and then in volume four, there's he he, inqu- he it turns out he's been carrying around her armor from either her corpse or a spare set that he got somehow, depending on who you're listening to, <laughs> and he melts it down to upgrade his armor and it's presented as this like very sweet like oh he wants to carry her memory with him but he spent the entire time that they knew each other basically like treating her like shit nagging her like <laughs> like ignoring her feelings while going after Weiss and never taking no for an answer like, and then he, they kissed he, once right before she died yeah at, at one point she confesses to him that she loves him and she walks away and then, rather than chase her and follow that up, he turns around to this other dude who just walked in and told him off for not dating Weiss, who's the girl he wants to date. Yeah. Like, He's like, I'm a just... better person than you because you said no to a girl. You can't say no to girls. They're very sensitive and fragile. <sighs> yeah. It just... He's just... Yeah. It's it, so it, bad. He, he had no right to that armor. He had... It... And, then, and then, see, in this, in, this, in this... I don't know if it's in this episode, but in this season, while they're out, they're wandering around this... Uh, town is at one point and they it turns out this is where Pyrrha's from and they put yeah, up a statue to her they put up a statue to her and she sees the statue and he has this sad moment looking at the statue and then the other two members of the team who are also Pyrrha's friends turn yeah. up and they comfort John they're about- immediately like <laughs> John you can't keep doing this and like they're not even surprised to see the statue of their friend really like they're a little surprised Mm. But then they're like, "Oh, we're just really worried about you, John, and how yeah. what all this means to you because what your Pyrrha you, died, and what you lost when Pyrrha died, because that was your loss. This other person dying, 
Yeah. Not just not like our friend dying. It was your loss. Like it's like just. Ugh. And Pyrrha's mysterious ghost mom shows up. Like she appears like Batman out of nowhere, <laughs> and then assures John that she had that Pyrrha. It's okay that she died because she did what she wanted. And she had the best friends clearly at school, mm. and is like, and you did nothing wrong, John. And then she disappears into the night before the other two show up because who cares. It is worth remembering that John is like in a small way. Partly responsible for Pyrrha's death. Yeah. Because Pyrrha went off to fight Cinder, who at this point was super powered and, and way outmatched Pyrrha. Yeah, like Pyrrha kind of knew she was going to die, theoretically. Yeah, and, and, but, but, she, but, like, but she told Jorn, go and get help. Like, go and, go and, get, go and get one of the, some of the Atlas soldiers or someone. I'm going to try and ho- hold her up. I mean, I guess she did shove him into a locker after that, so maybe he couldn't get out because he sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, that's part of it. But he, like, rather than like, he doesn't try to stop her, and then when he does go to get help, he tells one person. He tells Ruby, who's a fucking oh, student. Yeah? Like that's that's the only person he tells. Fourteen year old. Fucking yeah. So he's partly responsible. He is partly responsible for her death as well. Oh, and right. and don't forget, like. She- the uh, Cinder was able to attack because they were like, stand guard, John, and then he wasn't looking and he wasn't standing guard. Oh, that's guard, right, yeah, and yeah. And she was able to sneak attack them. Yeah, but Cinder only ever got the rest of the maiden powers, which Pyrrha was meant to get, which would have put them on equal, equal footing, while Pyrrha was in this vulnerable position stuck in this, like, coffin thing. John just had to keep an eye on the door. And what does he do? He turns his back to the door <laughs> and Cinder walks in and t- has all the time in the world to line up a shot. And and kills someone. So yeah, he's just the fucking worst. And it, just, again, it's like the show keeps acknowledging that he's the worst, but then it keeps making us want to care about him and sympathize with him. And it's like, well, but he's I, such an asshole. After like season after season four, it was like they started to try and get in on the joke because they were aware that like even even amongst Ruby fans, I mean, it's it's mixed, but there are people who were like, no, John sucks. John's no, lame. I, we don't I would like say John. the majority of Ruby fans do not like John. I mean, I've, I've seen, seen I've seen. Ruby fans stand him, but like only the it's people pretty who rare. tend to be they tend to be the people who are kind of like him. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah, like it's that, so it's sort of like since everyone sort of acknowledges that he kind of sucks, it's like they've started to try and get in on the joke and deliberately make him suck. And it's like no, fair, no, 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 they, no, no, they've no. kind of played with that the entire time. Yeah, sort of. But like, remember in volume but, three when it's like we also have team attack names, and then it's like no, we don't. You suck. <laughs> uh-huh, I mean, loser. yeah, that's that's true, but but the, but like you say, they're sort of they're going back and forth. Where like, yeah, they they, they keep they, having these moments of like, yeah, he was able to defeat the Grim by himself. And it's like, no, he got hit in the balls. <laughs> yeah, or, or yeah, no, he has a, he's a good tactician and a good leader. No, his ideas suck. Let's just listen to Ruby. Yeah, but no, he is. And no, then, he is, and then no, his he ideas is, are like, attack with everything you have. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> well, that, yeah, well, no, you. no one ever has any, an idea that's more complicated than that. Like, there's no actual clever. Like strategy in any of the fights. No, because um, then you have to figure than, that out. Yeah, that's as more the writer. Than, yeah, um, but yeah, they do tend to do this thing where they go back and forth on him, and it's yeah. So they have like this big sad moment with him in front of Pyrrha statue, and yeah. and it plays a song where it's like some people fall in love for life, <laughs> and, it, and it's just so annoying because like they completely because they kissed once it's like they were married forever mm. and it's not like he just treated her like shit most of the time they were together it's just such a textbook fridging yeah it's very straightforward fridging has been an established trope like as a thing you should not do for a long time now and they're still yeah. just doing it they don't care like they just they still think that this is compelling that like this girl, this girl died and that gives him some depth and it really doesn't like it just no, it just makes him more frustrating and more of an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the reason that they were all separated is because they get back and they explain this whole... They explain episode three to Team JNR, and everyone's all upset about it. Mm. And John ends up being an asshole to Oscar, who's a blameless boy. Well, he punches... He, he's he, like, he, pun- he punches this, like, 13-year-old. Who no, right now he, is- he, like, hits him against a wall. Doesn't he punch uh, him? Uh, uh, Crow was the one who punched him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Crow punched him, but no one ever. No one. Everyone's about bullying that. my boy. This is the thing. Okay, so this this is this is the thing. We haven't really talked about Oscar that much. Oscar is this utterly tragic figure. Like, he's an eleven yeah, year old kid who whose body has been taken, has been subsumed, but to the purpose of this asshole who. Now that Ospin has just retreated and isn't talking to anyone anymore. The rest of the characters half the time treat Oscar like he's got to answer for everything that Ospin's done. 
Yeah, like, like John th- is like, you're tricking me, and Crow punches him. And mm. it's like, it's his boy, he's a little boy. <laughs> He's a, he's a young boy who who is here of no fault of his own, and you are bashing Sweet him because boy. because like he doesn't deserve any of this. He has done he absolutely nothing this. wrong. He didn't no. choose shit. No, and, and just, he's, he's just, just here supposed answering... to yeah handle everything now. And maybe Ozpin is going to take his entire brain over at some point. Yeah, like the the characters should know this. They should understand how that works. I mean, I could understand them being like irrationally mad, but the, but then so it's like okay, so John got irrationally mad, and and that was bad. But then as soon as they meet back up, Oscar's immediately like, "I forgive you. It wasn't your fault. This is all very confusing." Yeah, yeah, but but it's also of course. Now, don't worry, John. Not your fault again. Yeah, never your fault. And and it turns because like Oscar runs away after they have that big fight, and it's like, oh no, where would Oscar go? What's going to happen to Oscar? And it turns out he accepted death off screen and went to buy new clothes that suck. <laughs> and so that's like the big reveal of like, oh oh, it's fine. He's back. He bought new clothes, and he's like, it's fine. I realize I'm not going to be here much longer, you know, because my brain's going to be taken over by an evil man. So I figured I'll just do my best in the meantime. And yeah, it's like, th- god damn it, Oscar. <laughs> that is that is such a huge. Okay, so there's two things, right? That is such a huge character moment to have off screen. But yes. also, what was established in the Jin thing is that they live side by side. So this is this thing where they sort of go back and forth depending on what they want to do. Yeah, because like, in Volume 5, they heavily imply that he will take Oscar over he, at some point. And yeah, then as of Episode 3, we're like, oh, thank God, it's not going to happen. And then Oscar's like, I, know, I don't know how much longer that I'll continue to exist. And then we're like, wait, what? No, 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 no! You, you guys, you guys undid this. It's okay, but it's, it, it all just comes down to like in episode three, they wanted us to be on Ozma's side, so he doesn't take over the brains of people. But in this yeah. episode, they wanted to give Oscar a dramatic scene, so they act like he's dying. God, so, and it's like <sighs> during the time we should have seen Oscar have this revelation for some reason. We were with John, seeing John be still sad about Pira and getting over it. I guess this is the episode that establishes Oscar's character. And we just get to see Jean being sad again. Oh, but in the meantime, Maria is being Yoda with Ruby. Oh, yeah. This this is the other incredibly frustrating thing about Ruby. I think we've, uh, we said this before, but, like, they cannot bring themselves... Every time they have to introduce some new bit of lore or element, they just have to introduce a new fucking character when, they, when the cast is already so bloated. Like, and I'm not even just talking about the main team, which is already bloated. There are so many other auxiliary villains and other, other people wandering around that don't, that, like, we'll spend a whole, like, one or two seasons with nothing to do. Yeah, like, again, like, Salem's entire team, except for Cinder, who's, like, separated from them right now, doesn't do anything this season. Nothing. They nothing. spend this season just chilling out at home. So Team Ruby's like, we've really got to rush. We've really got to get there. We've got to do whatever it takes. And mm. Salem's team is like, boop, 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 do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Salem's team uh, sort of casually just go to Atlas. The, yeah. The, so, yeah we, we're going to Atlas. At the very end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. Ruby's no, team not, is so not, convinced they're going nuts. Wasn't that early? It wasn't like halfway through the season? The, 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 like, there's that scene with... Um, Watts and and uh, the, the teabagging with... scene is the teabag... in episode nine. Oh, okay, all right. We'll get to the teabagging. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's so the introduce so like it's already established at the end of season three. The crow knows about Silver Eyes. Yeah, yeah. He's oh. like Silver Eyes are these warriors that are legendary, but he's very yeah. vague about it because they haven't figured out what they want to do with it yet, or why <laughs> yeah, people yeah. have Silver Eyes. So it's just like so they're super good and beat Grim yeah. super bad. So that's that's one character who knows about Silver Eyes. Ozpin obviously knows about Silver Eyes because he 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 recognized that Ruby had them and wanted to keep her around. So that's two characters already on the team that know about Silver Eyes. But no, let's introduce this stupid, annoying old woman who's going to be the one who teaches. Ruby about Silver Eyes. Like, yeah, she does is, not like, need to be She's here. supposed to be sassy, but she ends up just being a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she's just an asshole. Like, she's a huge asshole. Yeah. And, and, and she just like, does, but she, I didn't... I said stop yelling! She, <laughs> she does not need to be there at all. Yeah. Like, she, th- this, this function... This function could have been filled by someone else. But, like, but either one of those other two people on the team. But, no, nah, we're going to have this new person who's going to... Have a long, boring, pseudo-philosophical conversation about 
how you got to think about positive things yeah, and what is life. And you know. She can tell Ruby what she needs to do to use the eyes, but Maria didn't know where the eyes came from either. No. And so she figures it out because she's like, remember during episode three, were you paying attention? Oh, and, yeah. And then and the silver, <laughs> the god of creation, when he made the grim go away, and Ruby's like, his eyes. And it shows the moment when like the god of light made some grim disappear, and his entire Entire body glows white, and it like goes boosh, and the grim yeah. all disappear. And the then big sphere pops like, up out of him. It wasn't his eyes. You didn't see his eyes. The, like, there the, was the silver nothing eyes about a, his eyes that glowed. The silver eyes, when we saw them happen, had a very specific effect that came out of Ruby's eyes. Like, yeah. and they did like not replicate that on the His eyes aren't even glowing. Guy. They're just like kind of milky pink. <laughs> yeah. They aren't silver. No. They aren't. They don't glow and make the grim go away. But the, like, it's so weird <laughs> it's... for the characters to show us that not happening and then say that it happened. It's just. It's great because it's like it, it was like the show was meant to be going. Oh, did you guys see the little hint we left back in episode three? It's like, no, you didn't leave it there. You didn't. Yeah, do and that. it's like, and if you you should have realized that you didn't do that, like maybe you forgot, and then maybe just don't show it. And like most of the people are paying little enough attention that they'll assume it was in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> but instead they they made sure they insisted on showing us that it definitely didn't happen and they're lying. It's just, it's just baffling. So yeah, her eyes are from the god of creation. You're showing us that you failed to show us something. Yeah, it's super good. Uh. And and it's supposed to be like but you so so she says the eyes you you shouldn't think of them as destruction. Your eyes destroy Grimm as a means of preservation, which is an extension of creation. They're creation god powers. I love that they're still trying to make that work when you already blew it all up in episode three. Yeah, and so it's it's, it's presented as like, it's a good thing because it's the god of creation's powers. It's like, you really don't think he's a fucking asshole, do you? Yeah, he's worse. You think that he was in the right. He's actually, he, he is sort of worse than the god of destruction. Yeah, the God of Destruction, you at least kind of understand. He's like, look, whatever, I'm going to do what I want. I'll kill humans if I want, but I also gave you magic because I thought that'd be interesting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He And he, he's, at, at the minimum, he's honest the entire time. Whereas yeah. the, the, the God of Creation straight up lies. Like, Yeah, and he's a fucking prick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, they, they, they Oscar's back. Uh, Ruby's learned a little bit about Silver Eyes, and they decide, okay, it's episode nine. Uh, we need to kick this season into motion. Uh, John's got an idea uh, of how to get to Atlas. Uh, <laughs> and his idea is mm-hmm. we, we need to go to Atlas and ask them for a favor, right? We right. need to get them to protect this relic. Yeah. We need their help. Help us, Atlas. How will we get their help? Let's steal one of their attack ships and fly in there after committing, you know, some damage and theft. And uh, they'll definitely help us out then. Yeah, let's steal from the military. That's a normal thing. Let's attack the military and steal from them. And then they'll help us out when we get there. And to everyone else's credit, they're all like, that sounds fucking stupid. Yeah, wife and says that sounds is dumb. like, yeah, that's fucking stupid. And then Ruby's like, fuck you, dad. I mean, uncle. You're... No, f- fuck you, old man. Oh, yeah, fuck <laughs> you, old man. Like, youth culture for life. Since you <laughs> said we can't do it, we're going to do it, and it's going to be the best, and I love it. I love the yeah. idea now. Yeah. It... Let's still from the military. Let's start a war. More crimes. Doesn't Crow actually say why are you in such a hurry? No, that was in my that was in my comic. Oh, he's, okay. he's like just very like look like this isn't something that you can just if it goes wrong you can just be like whatever this is stealing from the military like that's incredibly stupid you shouldn't do that which is like yeah yeah, yeah. That's, inc- that's super reasonable it's not like he was just like no I'm a negative Nelly and I don't want to do a good but that, he, but that's like, how the show is treating it the show is treating it like oh this is just Crow being negative because. He's been negative since episode three. Like that's how yeah. that's how you're meant to feel about it. But but no, no. Once once again, you have given the character you think is wrong the reasonable statement, which you keep yeah, and doing. Ruby Ruby makes it about kids versus adults, which is really weird because half of most of Team Ruby, except for her and Oscar, are of age now. They're like nineteen. Yeah. And she's like, so maybe you know, since the adults have whatever, you should trust us kids for once. And it's like, what? He didn't say Ooh. you couldn't steal from the military because you're children. He said yeah. you shouldn't steal from the fuck military <laughs> because it's the military because it's a bad idea and yeah it, you know, the it, military it does, that it you think this. is so powerful that it can protect you from 
from Salem that military. <laughs> this show, this show does this with its dialogue a lot, where it's just, it's just nonsense. Like it's just, it, it it'll, it'll throw in like a, a a statement or a little theme into a conversation that it thinks is cool, but it's totally disconnected from whatever we were just yeah, talking it's about. It's things so, that yeah. they think sound like anime dialogue. But yeah, without yeah, yeah. Anything to like connect it or make it make sense. Yeah, yeah. Because the the show really doesn't have anything thematic going on. Yeah, it's just a, it's, it's just a bunch of place. nonsense. Conne- it was just a bunch of nonsense connecting fight scenes until we just started forgetting about the fight scenes. Yeah. So now it's just but nonsense. To be fair, the season nonsense. did have more. Of course, there wasn't a fight scene with the Dementors, unfortunately. No, that was yeah. They, but yeah. look, look. What's important is that we're ba- we got to talk about the teabagging scene. Oh yeah. Okay. So just really briefly, we find we, for the first time, I think the first time this season, we we see Salem again. The, and... the, no, Salem told him about Cinder being alive earlier. Oh yeah, like all, yeah. all the bad guys except for Cinder come back to base, and they're like, "Man, we did a real bad job last season." <laughs> and so they're all just kind of like hanging out at base, being like, "Man, this sucks." And Cinder mm. had these two lackeys who are like other, you know, super teens that mm. don't know what to do with themselves now. And so they have an argument, and then who shows up? Tyrion, Scorpion, Tyrion, creepy guy, the creepy Scorpion man. And so his way the guy of being who makes every creepy, scene worse. Is that he knocks Mercury down and he spends the next like three minutes teabagging him <laughs> while they have a conversation? Yeah, it's just it's it's this it's this po- fairly pointless conversation where like Tyrion just sort of calls them dumb kids and explains he, how they're going. He, off all the... he's saying is that they're going to Atlas, but he yeah. manages to make it like this three minute super creepy kind of sexual conversation. <laughs> yeah, and, and the entire time he's doing it, he's crouching with his balls over. Over, 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 um, Mercury's Mercury. mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it just. <laughs> it seems like the animators forgot that's where he was. Like, yeah, because like it just keeps going, and they just keep talking, and it's like, please stand up. I cannot listen to what you're saying. Stop teabagging him. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it is a power move, to be fair, I suppose. But like... yes, and it's great because right before he does that, Mercury says, "You don't know me," and tries to punch him, and then Tyrion's like, "No, nah, I'm teabagging you." <laughs> And so you find out that they're going to Atlas uh, for some reason that we'll yeah. find out next season, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And that's they're, all we really see from there. the bad guys. So, so, so it's, it's good to know um, before the rush to Atlas even starts that the rush to get to Atlas uh, was pointless because the bad guys are already there. And it's like exactly what, like, we didn't need to see that because we would have guessed, like, so they went to the other two bases and fucked them up. So obviously that's going to be their plan to do that in Atlas. Like, you would yeah. assume that. And yeah, then like, they like, show you, yeah, of course, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, and then look, the character's like, like we got to fucking get to Atlas. It's like, it, it's, it's so fucking dumb because at least in season four, for all of the four season four had, the Ruby racing to get, well, not racing, walking, to get to Haven was like, Oh, okay. Well, now that we're in Haven, maybe we can actually stop what's about to happen. And then the last scene in Haven, you find out that Haven is already... The last se- scene in that season, you find out Haven is already compromised. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. So but, so, so it, it undercuts what happened that season. The, 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 we aren't safe. You know, this, that's the cliffhanger. In this season, not only are they repeating the same plot point... They undercut it before we even get to the climactic thing, so there's no stakes anymore. Yeah, like, we know that they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, we, we, we know from the start they're doing the wrong thing, so we don't care that, whether or not they succeed, because and we they're know they're already fucked. And they're going to do some extreme... Sh- I mean, they, they want to steal from the military to do something gonna get worse. that's not going to help. <laughs> no, they, they, they do something... They make it a lot worse. So, oh, God. So, so um, the plan... The plan. Dun, dun, dun. So the plan. It, it starts off with Weiss turning up on her own with a suitcase, saying, "I." Wanna I'm go gonna to go Atlas. back to my dad. It's fine. Yeah. This is yeah. normal. She gets on a ship. Uh, she opens the suitcase, and Maria pops out. Um, a small lady, and she can pilot the ship. Apparently. Oh, but she says, "I think I can," and and, and flies it badly. And think, oh, "Isn't this funny?" Um, but meanwhile, but so they have to knock out the two guards that are on the ship, and it's yes. so funny because it makes slashing sound effects off screen, and so it's like, oh, Weiss fucking killed them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but then it shows them, and they're like tied up, and they're being dropped in a parachute, uh, presumably into the ocean. Yeah. So like those guys are dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're tied up and being dunked, and the, yeah, they're dead. I mean, yeah. we see them later; they're fine. But whatever, and 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 they were they were like cartoons, to be fair. Yeah, they're unkillable, I guess, by cartoon yeah. logic. So the, the the way this plan works is that they're going to steal a ship that has 
you know, the correct identity codes to get into Atlas. Um, but it, in order to get out, they have to disable this communications tower so that... Because otherwise they'll, like, know that they... Oh, no, it's because they have to swing back around to pick everybody up. That's, That's the only right, reason yeah, they yeah. have to do they, the tower thing. They have to They have to come back, grab everyone else, and then leave. So they have to... Get, and, and they're picking them up from this place where if they just disable this one tower, uh, Atlas... Like, I guess Adla- the, the people monitoring at the base won't care that one of their towers went down. Yeah, they won't like, be like, that's fucking suspicious. Yeah, yeah. And and also one of our ships is missing. I um, mean, I guess theoretically by the time they found out, they hope that they'll just be on their way to Atlas. Yeah, but, but still... it's also you're, you're... like, this entire problem could have been avoided if they just picked them up a little further away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Outside of the radio tower range thing, which yeah, isn't very yep. far as established by previous scenes. It's not that far out. So... John's um, sister's wife works for the communications people, so she's going to help them deliberately disable, like, damage this radio tower. So, you know, that seems like something that's pretty risky for her to do, but whatever. Yeah, and, and Blake and is going to do it because she's the stealthy one. Yeah, she's going to do it by herself. And it also has to go wrong when Blake turns up and all of the workers there are dead. Why are they dead, though? <laughs> because Adam's there! Yay! It's yeah, Adam! Yeah, Adam, do you remember Adam? He came back. He's back. He just wouldn't stay away. He saw how knew where Blake was going to be. Mm-hmm. He got there early. Killed everyone. Which is the thing, to be fair, as established at the beginning of the season, is the thing he likes to do now. I guess they, the guards might have just been knocked out. We we don't see blood. They seem pretty slumpy. I don't know. I, yeah. I mean, it would not make no sense for him to non-lethal people, but, you know, you never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So he's here to... I guess he kill wants to kill Blake. Blake. Yeah, he's yeah. like, Blake, finally, we're alone. Mm. And it's and, and, so and it, weird because, like, the way that it's shot, like, even the people, again, who were, like, excited by him showing back up were like, that was random, but okay. Because, again, <laughs> like, he hasn't been mentioned for many, ep- for most of the season. And mm. you just, like, see him down in a corner like a cockroach. Mm. And he's just, like, suddenly there. And he's like, ah, oh, Misty Blake or whatever. Finally, we can be alone. And it's like, what? <laughs> Why are you, what are you doing here? Obviously, the plan was going to be blown up in some way, but why him? Why was it him? Yeah. Why, why? It's just like, hey, I'm a loose plot thread, and I'm hanging here. Yeah, like, <laughs> like if Cinder and Neo had turned up here. Yes, that would have made sense. Because their stated goal was stop Ruby getting to Atlas. That was the goal. Yes, like, anything no, would have made more sense than him. But no, the, the guy who has had no connection to this part of the plot has no reason to know where they are, like, they, he wouldn't even know that they were in Argus, let alone... I mean, like, I guess theoretically he has Little Miss, and Little Miss has all information, is the implication. But it's still, yeah, like, he's been stalking them, apparently, this entire time, and he somehow caught up with them after he, like, went back to his base and killed everybody and hung out for yeah. a while being sad, and then he... It's, and got ahead it's of It's only them. been, like, like, a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So he's there to kill Blake. Um, yeah, he's here now. Incredibly frustrating. Like, and again, in that sort of thing of like, let's have some anime dialogue. Are you just going to keep running away forever? And it's like, motherfucker, that was what you did at the end of the last season. Yeah, he's like, can't you do anything but run away? <laughs> that plot point has resolved, God damn it. Yeah, fucking. But it, again, it, it's just this Ruby thing of like, let's just go back because we don't know what to do once their character arc is resolved. So let's yeah. just unresolve it and keep going. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. no, Blake runs away. That's her thing. And it's really funny because at first he's like, uh, you know, how could you ruined everything in my life, Blake, which is really funny. Um, <laughs> but then she's like, you need to give this up, Adam, for your own sake. And it's like, you shouldn't be having this conversation with him. He's like a mass murderer. You just yeah, should yeah, be you, killing him. <laughs> you shouldn't be worried about his well-being. Like, you shouldn't be trying yeah, to don't make... don't worry about his mental don't, health. Don't, don't help him help himself. Kill him. Yes. He's been trying to kill you for three seasons now. He's an awful person. He's not redeemable. I know you were like, like dating while you were a teenager, and he was an adult, and was, his, and you had like a creepy child grooming relationship. But it's over now, and it's time for him to die. Yeah, yeah, and it just the idea that the idea that he's being presented as sympathetic at all is just so, so absurd. Weird. But it's yeah, just, so, it's again this thing of they don't they don't know the elements they've got. They don't they don't really think about the sort of person they've actually portrayed, really. Like, yeah, so he's yeah. fighting Blake, but then what's Team Ruby doing in the meantime? Oh, shit, they're, they're on radar. They know that they stole their airship, so they're going to send some ships out after them, right? Mm. 
Well, why? What happens? Well, well, sending a few more ships would make sense. Yeah. But no, this is Ruby. So the mountain moves. And out steps a giant fucking Mecha. <laughs> wow, Mecha are really cool. I like Mecha. I love Gurren Lagan. <laughs> is it a cool Mecha? No. It's this big... Like, considering they were making Genlock at the same time... Yeah, that time, had some Mecha designs. Yeah, I, the Mecha designs are actually kind of cool. And this is the lamest, weirdest looking, like, just big four legs sort of... Like, it's, it's got it's got two two big stumpy legs and two big stumpy arms... And it just sort of waddles about in this really boring, slow way. Yeah, it's incredibly <laughs> simplified. But it, it's big and slow, but it's able to keep up with this airship by, like, running after it in the shallow water. It's, it's like, it's, here, it, I'm going to come get ya. Its strengths and weaknesses and everything are entirely inconsistent. But And for some reason, while Cordova's really... Like, Cordova and Maria apparently have this history, and Cordova's really pissed that Maria stole this ship. So as she's but getting out of the robot... not in a, the like, robot, you're committing a war crime way. It's like, oh, you sassy you're cheeky, woman, you... You're cheeky. You, sa- you sassy old lady, you stole a ship not... your shenanigans. Not- yeah. But the, the, the weird thing is that she decides to take this out on Argus while, by, while she's, like, getting the robot up and running and walking away. She yells at the town for, like, this weird, this weird fascist speech about this is why you need me and us... Oh yeah, we'll and show I'm... you the mighty power of Atlas. Yes, it, 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 it's like it, it, people it makes... don't know what's happening. And again, when people are freaked out, it's established that when you feel negative emotions, Grim show up. So the Team Ruby has stolen from the military. They're sending out this giant bot to fight them, but there's no Grim around. There's some kind of like it looks like there's some kind of intermilitary conflict going on, mm. and um, you know that might freak people out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you'd be worried about upsetting people. Like, this yeah. seems dang- this seems like a dangerous thing to do, as Crow said. <laughs> like, yes, and again, but- like, there's no good reason for them to be rushing this much. We know that because of both logic and what we saw Salem doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like maybe they don't know the Salem bit, but we you like first of all, we know. Probably so- going to Atlas. Yeah, it's well, the like, most for- obvious yeah. thing for them to be doing. Yes, yeah, because they did. This is what they've done all the other seasons. So even 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 without them knowing specifically that, it still makes no sense. That there's no, there's absolutely no justification for them rushing the way they do. Yeah, and so so it turns out they have to fight a mech. <laughs> they have to fight a mech. So the mech has hard light dust. Yeah, she says Atlas is the leader in hard light dust. <laughs> Whatever that is. So it has a shield. It has shield. So they're saying, well, how do we defeat this mech? And then Ruby says, in video games. There's a weak point on the back, and then Weiss is like, that's fucking stupid. But of course, when someone says something stupid, you know that it's true. So there's yeah. a big hatch on the back that says shield generator, and they shoot it to deplete its HP. <laughs> <laughs> the shield generator is behind a hatch they can pull off with their hands on the back of this huge super armored mech. And it has a big convenient label, and then the meter go boom, we go yeah, down. Yeah, the meters go down. We see, we see meters on her hard go down. It's very cool. This could have been cool, but the rules for the mech are inconsistent, so sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. Yeah, it can catch a missile, but then theoretically it's also this big slow thing. Yeah. And secondly, now you're a fan of butt rock. I do like the butt rock in Ruby, or I, I have in the past. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I'm not as, it's not as much my thing, but I think we can both agree this, the song for this fight scene was probably the worst bit of butt rock they've done so far. It's a bad butt rock. <laughs> yeah. Jeff likes to scream sing, but he's not he's not a professional scream singer. So, like, the characters are moving really slowly, and it's like... Because cause they, they didn't really have a good idea of how to make these very fast characters fight this very slow mech. So instead, everyone just kind of moves in slow motion. And meanwhile, <laughs> Jeff is like... And it's just like, oh, no. <laughs> it, it's funny, because it's not a great song to begin with. Casey's doing her best... Just singing the rest of the lyrics, but yeah. then like the chorus is like she'll sing something and then it's interrupted by <laughs> like it's just <laughs> it's, it's awful. <laughs> it's really bad. Like it, it seems like as the show's been going on, Jeff he's like been infected by Ruby Fever, where he just starts to think he's more competent than he is. Yeah, <laughs> he's, like, just... he's done the scream singing in other songs, and I swear it's not been this bad. Like it, it's not super great, but like in caffeine and stuff, it's like eh, it's, it's still fun, but it's it's gotten worse. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot worse than this one. So it's 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 a bad bit of butt rock. 
The fight sucks. Yeah. Uh, they had a plan that didn't work out. Then Ruby like jumps inside. There's, basically, the robot oh, has God. a big drill on one arm and a big dust gun on the other because, again, it's Atlas. They've got tons of dust. Yeah. And Ruby manages to jump inside the barrel of the gun. It looks so bad. It looks awful. And blow it up. All of the effects in this fight are really bad. Like, cause For the first time, we see Ruby's semblance in slow motion, and it looks fucking awful in this, in this fight. Yeah, before this season, Ruby's semblance was that she twirls into her cape and goes super fast, and it fl- and petals flow behind her. And it's always been pretty cool. Like it's mm. like, oh, she 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 go fast, like Sonic. That that's her power. She can go fast. I mean, there was that one time in season two where they forgot that she could do that. <laughs> yeah, they they forget that she can do it often. But when she uses it, it usually looks pretty cool and it feels fast. But mm. this season, they decided that instead, what she does is she becomes a big spirally flying Pac Man. That's not very fast, but at least she can fly, I guess. And it's, like, very... It's not cel-shaded, you know? Like, it's rendered, like, in full 3D with, like, black shadows, and it looks really goofy. And it's not part of her cape even anymore. No, like, when she comes out of it, it's like it's like several petals sort of receding in, like, a twirl, but it, it just looks... It just looks very basic. It, look, it looks like a really early test render. Yeah, it looks like they didn't finish it. And I feel like... This, this, these whole fights are very rushed looking, and I want to believe that it's Genlock because they were making two shows simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, the thing was that they had, from what we've been told, um, they were pulling people off for Ruby to work on Genlock because, like, Genlock obviously was a more intensive show. And, yeah. you know, to, to be honest, like, if I was managing Ruby, it, it would to me seem like. It really doesn't matter how bad we make this, people still keep watching it for some reason. So, like... Yeah, I guess it's fine. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, like, we couldn't try to make this shittier, and people are still watching this fucking show. So, Ruby gets inside the gun, and yeah. blows up the dust containers, which... She shoots the gun inside the gun, and it makes the gun go... <laughs> yeah. All the dust goes off at once. And it looks and really the, goofy. The... Wait, but you forgot the part before that where she gives a speech to Cordova and she like walks up to the mech and she's like, you gave us no choice because you said no to us because we asked for something unreasonable and <laughs> this right. is your fault now because we had no option left but to steal from the military. And and she's like, I'm going to give you one more chance to give us what we want. And Cordova's like, no. And then she's like, all right, bitch. <laughs> and, and then she does that thing. <laughs> It's yeah. just so unreasonable. It's so unreasonable what they're doing. It, it yeah, makes no sense. Yeah, so they sense. fuck up the mech, and then simultaneously the Blake uh, Adam fight is going on, mm. and he's beating her now because you know the plot demands that he's stronger than her now again. Mm. Yep. And yep. and then so Yang shows up, and she <laughs> hits him with her motorcycle. That's a good moment. This motorcycle, which has been her main thing for the whole series. She just fucking yeets it into him. To like, yeah, and it's just like, bam! And he's just like, fuck! It flies off a cliff. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, it's like, thank you, Bumblebee, you did it. <laughs> and then so they fight together, and it's very gay. She yeets the motorcycle into Adam, and stands in front of Blake, and Adam says, why are you protecting her? Oh, yeah, and she's like, I'm not protecting her. And she's not protecting me. And they hold hands, and they say, we're protecting each other. Oh, uh, got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> what? That line is lame, and it makes no sense. Yeah, it's like, so you are protecting her. Yeah, it's like, I'm not protecting her. I'm protecting her. And she's protecting me. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> but, so they hold hands, and then they fight. Yeah. And th- there's some decent fight animation that they take. So before Monty died, he started an animation of Yang versus Adam that was supposed to be in volume three, but they, mm. they weren't able to finish it. They like, didn't have time to work on it. So it like she, Adam just beats her instantly in the actual episode. And which was, which was the, the worst, maybe the worst part of that episode, because that, that particular fight had ramifications for the rest of the season up to this point where Yang was dealing with the loss of her arm and the PTSD and all that stuff. So that should have been yeah. a big fight in that episode, but no, it's it's over in like twenty seconds. <laughs> like someone, um, I forget who leaked this. I feel like it has to have, be someone who worked at Rooster Teeth, because mm. the fact that that footage got leaked now, of all times, like or at least I never saw it before then, that mm. half done Monty fight, um, because they use some of that fight animation in this fight with Yang mm. versus Adam. 
And yeah, so it's, it's like really weird because it like it's cool looking and it looks cool when Monty was doing it, but it's kind of out of place because now Adam has this like different power that he hasn't had this whole time. Yeah, where he yeah. can like kind of teleport around and do ninja shit. Mm, that's the first time we've ever seen him do that, and it does look cool. But... Yeah, it looks cool, but again, like it would have made more sense in Volume Three before we'd like really seen him fight in the show. Yeah, here it's yeah. kind of strange, and it and it feels weird for them to be just like pulling Monty's stuff and like not really giving him credit for it. It feels mm. like it's odd. It feels yeah, it is, gross. Yeah. The, the 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 show's relationship with Monty, um, it's weird. It is. It feels strange now because it, so much of the show feels like on the one hand that you you suspect that they think they're doing an awesome job. But other parts of the show really does feel like they just don't give a shit. But that's like, it's a dead Perkinson's legacy also. Yeah, yeah. This was Monty's big thing, this show. Weird. Like, and, and they like still keep selling it as like, this is his baby. This is, you know, created by mm. Monty Oom. Mm. But then they make the bad things. <laughs> and then it's like, don't, poor boy. But the Monty also had his own problems. Oh, of course. And obviously volumes one and two like weren't well written even while he was there. No, no. They they had a, they had a better like at least like the focus was on the fights in those because there were lots yeah. of them. Yeah. And then when the fights happened, they were cool because that was what he was good at. Yeah. And like and the fact that he was bad at writing was like, well, okay, he's brand new at this. Of course he's bad. This this is laughably bad, but it's not the point of the show, so that's okay. He, and Maybe he just wants better. to make the the girls hit each other, and then they yeah. do hit each other, and it's nice. Yeah, yeah. They're fighting Adam. Yang's like Blake. You take a load off. I'll fight him. And she's fighting him, then they fight him a bit together, and then Adam is using his big, uh, powerful semblance on Yang, and Yang catches it with her robo-arm. She catches his katana, Mm. and she's like, I may not be as fast as you, or something. I forget what she says, she's not as something as him. But she Mm. says, but I'm smarter. And then she punches him real hard, and then he's <laughs> defeated. And it's like, it's not, it's not a smart thing to do. <laughs> no, this, 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 like, it's not a smart thing to do to block the blade and then punch a guy in the face. That's not, like, outwitting. And it's like, if she said, I'm stronger than you, it would have made sense both, like, metaphorically and physically. But it, it's almost like they were like, that's too obvious. <laughs> mm. There's also a really funny scene, there's a, a moment in it when, like, you think that um, Blake has been kicked off a cliff, and he's talking to Yang, and like, but then you can see behind him, Blake is like creeping up the cliff in the background, but it's so far away that she looks like a little cockroach, just sort of. And, and and she's like Spider Maning up it, like she has her like arms and legs all out to like. It looks yeah, it's stupid. very funny. Oh, it's also great because he cut her coat off, and oh, and yeah. they're like this whole place is wintry, and no one's dressed for winter yet because they have their mm. you know it's like a video game, and they only have one character model. But so he like cuts her coat off, and so she's in this like little tank top in the middle of like all this cold, and it's never a problem or brought up. But the, the, the 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 cold the cold uniform thing is like is actively stupid because in this episode when we see Yang and uh, uh, Cinder and Neo. They've changed their clothes to be something even more unsuited to the cold. Yeah, she's like, you might need some snow boots once we get to Atlas. And it's like, you might need some pants. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sleeves. Uh, maybe yes. a hat. Ugh. God. Yeah. Um, so, but they do beat him, and then they kick him off a cliff. They stab him off a cliff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a nice moment where they both take halves of Blake's sword and stab them into him from the front and the back. And mm. he's like, oh. <laughs> and, and it's Aww. real good. It's like, oh, that's a nice, like, oh. Like, that's a nice dying moment. But then he falls off a cliff and we're like, is he really dead, though? Because we saw someone else fall really far off a cliff. Yeah, but this, this this is what happens when you... If you do that, if you have a character survive falling off a cliff, I cannot trust the death, especially if I do not see the body. And we don't see the body. Even though he was stabbed twice and, like, fell off a cliff, I just don't trust that they're not going to bring him back. I, I don't... I just... I can't trust it. And then they asked Carrie in a Ruby Rewind if he's dead. And Carrie's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, good. And he's like, unless we decide to bring him back like some General Grievous thing. And I was like, no, you can't fucking... (laughs) (laughs) Carrie, you should know. You should know if he's coming back. Carrie, don't tell me that. This should not be up for debate, mate. You should know where your story's going. Because, like, again, like, I, I... much like Bumblebee being canon, at that point, if they were to have got it, yes, he is dead. I would have accepted it. But the fact that you're like, oh, but we might decide he's not, I guess. It's like, well, fuck you then. Yeah. 
Oh, and Bumblebee, they like hug and cry super hard, and it's like this feels kind of gay. I don't know. Yeah, and then but then they then they sort of word, they're, they're kind of word of God it is gay. Yeah, because he, he's like Which, good, good. Thank you. Like you've actually like. It was it was it was three seasons of baiting and now you've actually like followed through on it. So good. Yeah, he says like it's not fun if I if I just tell you, which like that's either yes or you're the world's biggest fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, if you say that and then you don't do it. Yeah, you are a piece of shit. That's maybe some of the worst baiting I've ever seen. Yeah. So, but I want it for this little thing. I will give him the benefit of the doubt and say yeah. that it's canon and they don't just want to say it, which is fair enough. You know, I understand writing romance. You don't just want to be like, yeah, it's going to sail. So meanwhile, on the mecha fight... Mecha fight. So they've ruined the mech. The mecha's whole purpose is to fight Grimm. Yeah. Like big Grimm that come from the sea sometimes. If like an apocalypse Grimm shows up... Yeah, like a really big Grimm maybe. The mech is there. Yeah, is is there to defend the city. And Ruby just ruined the Grimm in her mm-hmm. pointless rush to get to Atlas after she stole a ship. Yeah, they ruined the only means of defense and freaked everybody out, so what's going to happen? Well, what happens? Well, the shit son of Grimm show up and a giant <laughs> kaiju Grimm. <laughs> who could have foreseen this circumstance? Yeah, who could who could have thought ahead and thought maybe this might be a consequence of what, what we do? So fucking stupid. You uh. gave us no choice. <laughs> So a, sh- a fuck ton of Grimm show up, like flying yeah. from the skies, big kaiju coming in the from the ocean, and they're like, "Oh, maybe we fucked this up a bit." <laughs> and, and and then Cordovan's like, "This is your fault. This is your fault." And we're like, "Yeah, yeah, it is their fault." And I think we're supposed to be like, "No, Cordovan, you evil fascist, it's not their fault." But it is though. This is one hundred, one hundred and ten percent. Their fault. And, like, Cordovan also did a stupid thing by bringing the mech out in the, instead of sending fighter planes, but that doesn't forgive the thing Ruby did. No, Ruby instigated all of this. <laughs> yeah, so it's like she didn't handle it well, but it's still not, like, mostly her fault or anything. Cordovan's response was over the top, but, yeah, it, it, it was warranted based on what Ruby did, which was stealing a fucking ship. Yeah, it, fucking war crimes. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, oh, I guess we have to deal with all these grim. so they're like, we'll oh, take no, care hang of the kaiju. Hang on, hang on, hang oh. on. Which... Which character, which which fun old lady suggests, you know what, we could just fuck off and leave Argus to its fate. Did she? <laughs> yeah, she did. She said, That's look, right. That's, she's like, well, look, I, you know, just devil's advocate. We've got the ship now and they're distracted. We could just go. That would have been fucking amazing. Just truly cementing that Maria is an awful fucking character. She's such, she's the worst. It's just oh, awful. Just a bad, she, she sucks. She's not she's fun. She's supposed to be funny old lady. She's supposed to be Yoda, but she's just the fucking worst. She's just a shitty old woman character. And, yeah. So they're like, no, we'll help solve this problem that we made. So how can we defeat the giant Kaiju Grimm? This is the finale episode. This should be a big, huge, fun fight. Yeah, this should be like we... There's tons of Grimm flying through the air. There's all the Atlas ships flying at them. You know, you, you got like fighter planes, big birds, and everyone else. And like in this, the previous scene, everyone was jumping around in the air off Weiss's things. There's there's potential for this to be a big, cool finale fight. Yeah, you got to fight a kaiju. What happens? Well, Ruby's like, I'm gonna use my silver eyes now that I know how to do it. And she's like, everybody, let me do it. And so she goes in front of the kaiju's face on one of Weiss's bees that she can summon. And she's, like, thinking really hard. She's like, I gotta think about those happy thoughts. I mean life thoughts. It's not a Patronus. And then she's like, ooh, I'm thinking so hard. And so she's thinking about the good thoughts. But then, oh no, the bad thoughts come out. Like the time Pyrrha died when she used her powers the most effectively she's ever used them. Yeah, remember and- that? Remember how last time when Pyrrha, that actually happened, the, it's the silver eyes off? But this time, no, 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 that doesn't, that's not how it works anymore. Yeah, so she's like, oh, I can't do it. I'm just too sad. And then she's like, Jen... And Jin comes out, and time freezes, and she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to make a to freeze a time, because I didn't know what to do. And Jin's like, that's cheating, but you know what? It was pretty clever. I gotta respect that, kid. You got some chops. And we're like, shut the fuck up. This was the shittiest cop-out. Like, the solution to this problem with the big kaiju was already a cop-out, because the Silver Eyes in, 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 are essentially a cop-out. They're, they're a cop out from having to fight or do anything clever yeah. as a solution to a problem, and they've gone out of their way, like they've had all these opportunities where they could have made put some restrictions on it, but they haven't. And the only restriction they had was that Ruby needs to concentrate and think of happy thoughts, and she couldn't do it. So the idea that like, okay, I'm going to call up the gin, which will freeze time and give me a second, but for that I'm going to have to sacrifice a question. 
the last question. I need to, and I need to ask it now. I need to think of something I can ask. That would have been like an interesting sacrifice. Yeah, even if she had to ask something dumb, and she, and there's like a lot of obvious questions she could ask, like that might be on her mind, like where's my mom? Is she really dead? Or you know anything? But nah, Jin's like okay. What does Salem want? Do we actually need to kill Salem? Or can I kill Salem since she only said that Ozpin can't kill her technically? Yeah, yeah. Or like, is or even just something really broad, like is there a solution? And the Jin says yes. You know, like just so that she has hope and she has something to believe in, which is meant to be her whole thing. Yeah, in my mind, I really wanted it to be. I wanted her to say, "How did my mom die?" Because like that's something that she's always wondered about. And then Jin says, "She's not dead." Bum bum bum, and that's Whoa. all you need to know. Whoa. That would have been cool, but instead. Instead, they let they just let her get away with this. Yeah, she doesn't need to ask anything. And then she's like, okay, now that I have it a breather, I can mm. think of happy thoughts. Oh, and by the way, all the flashbacks, because the older seasons uh. were in Poser and the newer seasons were in Maya and they don't look at all alike, they mm. redrew, they like traced over all the flashbacks, but they look like really bad, like flash art. And yeah, so it's really terrible. funny seeing all these happy memories in this like goofy drawn over style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one of her memories is her mom, like, turning around, and you finally see her mom, and her design sucks, and it's just, like, kind of the same as Ruby, but... It's, it's, just, an older, it's just an older Ruby. And what all is... the same color. Like, yeah. it's even, like, she has the same, like, clavicle top with the detached sleeves, and it's like, come on. Guys, come on. And then, and then, so she's like, I thought enough good thoughts now, and then it starts playing, like, and the light power is mine, or something. It's, like, some very, like early English Sailor Moon insert song. <laughs> and and then she like does a big blah and it makes mm. the Grim be kind of stone for a few seconds. Yeah, so the, all, all the little Grim die. And the big Grim is Yeah, they do. Because there was there was a whole there was all those flocks of little Grim and they I all thought that of, the military was still dealing with them. That's a big range then. I could be wrong as well, but I th- I think it wipes out a little Grim. Okay. And then the big Grim, he's he's stone, but then he immediately starts breaking out of it. So good 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 job, Ruby. <laughs> and then and then Cordovan shows up and she's like I get to have the big cool final moment giga drill breaker and she <laughs> she uses the drill that you haven't seen until now to do a Gurren Lagan on the kaiju and beats it instantly and yeah. it's like this is the racist fascist lady I don't need her to have like a big cool moment where she befriends our heroes <laughs> yeah and also th- this was your big finale yeah, and it's just Ruby uses her eyes. One shot from a drill, and that's it. Yeah, that was it. And and then Cordovan's like, you know what? I forgive you now because I saved the day. But I guess you froze the Grim for a few seconds. So I'm gonna let you steal that military airship, and I'm sure nobody will mind. And we're cool. And so see ya. <laughs> <sighs> Why does she forgive them? Why? It's so fucking no stupid. Reason. It's war crimes. It's you, you like they caused this whole problem. They almost got all of Argus destroyed. Yeah, and Cordova knew it was their fault until she used her silver eyes real quick, and then she's like, "Never mind. I decided it's not your fault. We're cool." Just and if they hadn't shown up, and the kaiju had, she would have been fully equipped to deal with the problem. Like it's just, it's just so stupid. It's so bad. It's just so stupid. And at no point does anyone say you guys did the wrong thing. Like. It's it's not acknowledged that that was a fuck up. No, yeah, and it's all treated like they d- they got up to a few shenanigans, but their heart was in the right place, so it's fine. Mm, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So 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 then they all have like a breather moment on the airship where everybody's back together, and I guess Blake and Yang kind of off screen tell Ruby about all the Adam shit, which is like Ru- it would have been great if Ruby was like who. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that again? But she's like, oh man, that sounds like a real big thing you guys went through. It's interesting that there's this guy I've never seen. It would be funny if, if Ruby and Weiss just didn't believe that Adam was real. Yeah, like, why would they? It's like, you two can just kiss, you know. You don't need an excuse for why you keep running off together. It's fine. <laughs> we're, we're not homophobic. We, look, we might be. We don't know. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm racist, but I'm not a homophobe, maybe. Mm. Yeah, like but, Weiss, Weiss is established as racist, so you know. No, Who she's knows? over it because she has a black friend now, a Blake friend. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so they have their breather moment, and then Crow thinks about taking a drink, but then he doesn't because oh. he's learned his lesson to always believe in Ruby because everything worked out so well. <laughs> so I guess alcoholism over now. That's about as much effort as that's actually probably more effort than the PTSD getting over got. To be fair, uh, so. that was a different season. But her dad 
gave her shit about it and then she got over it until yeah, yeah. this season where she decided she's not over it actually and so they had to hold hands and now they're over it yeah now she's killed adam so she's over it we briefly see atlas where it's like it's it's a floating chunk of rock and it's stupid they, every time they get to a new location a new city they do this they do the same scene where someone goes i never get tired of this view oh yeah i was like oh it's amazing and and it's it's always it's always a bit less impressive than they intend. <laughs> like yeah, I mean it's just like it's like a, a matte concept painting. Yeah, there's a big floating city and there's the and there's the shitty industrial city where all the poor people live downstairs. Yeah, and it's like it's a big city on this like giant chunk of rock. It's very Final Fantasy, but it's like held down by a chain to the ground, or I guess like some cables. It's Alita. It's 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 exactly what's in Alita. Like oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the big floating city above and the shitty industrial city down below that makes all the stuff for the big city. Yeah, it's just so, like, inconvenient. Like, when you just, like, cut the cord, I want that to be Salem's plan. I want them to just cut that cord <laughs> and then Atlas goes flying off into space and they're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Our that privilege. Would be so... <laughs> that would be so funny. It'd it be just the floats best. away Do like it. a balloon. Do it, you cowards. Wait, but you know, it wouldn't work because once they get near space, the dust would stop working because dust doesn't work in space. That was in a yeah. world of remnants. That's why they don't have space travel. Because they need to they need to establish why they haven't why they're still on the one planet. Why they don't know why they have a shitty shattered moon. Uh, God. So that was Ruby Volume Six. That was Ruby Volume Six. It just it it really it it's it's we've been talking for almost three hours. Yeah. It really is so hard to summarize. Like, again, like, all they did was get most of the way to Atlas this season in terms of, like, physical progression. In terms of the actual plot, nothing changed from start to finish apart from we're going to get to Atlas, we got to Atlas. And now there's a lot of things we don't, like, understand how they factor into what's happening and the characters don't let it factor into what's happening yet. Yeah. So it's like... <laughs> that, that's the bit that blows my mind. It's like all this stuff you learned should have changed what you were doing. But you just yeah. you stubbornly did not let that change. Yeah, yeah it's... <sighs> so, is it savable at all? I think no now. I, no, I think it's done. I think it's like... Because I, 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 it, it's a fun thought experiment, like, after each season of Ruby to sort of go... Okay, how could you write the ship from this point? Yeah, how could we bring things back on track? It's like, one of the problems is we have ten people in the party now. Mm. And, like, it's very hard to find an excuse for any of them to leave because they're all convinced that they're on this, like, big important world-saving mission. Mm. That, like, so it, so it's like, are we just going to have to run around with ten people from now on? <laughs> mm. And it's like, the show keeps telling us they all have to be here together because it's all about friendship and shit. But, like... Most of them don't get anything to do, really, in terms of what actually happens during the season. Like, Yeah, like, until Adam showed up, Blake spent most of this season just standing in the back not saying anything. Yeah, same as, same as Yang, really. Same as Weiss. John, uh, Nora, and Ren had absolutely nothing to do this season. Like, we, we, obviously, we didn't, even, we didn't even need to see them for half of it. Yeah. They don't have any ongoing plot threads. This next season in Atlas, obviously, Weiss is going to, you would assume, have stuff to do. Yeah. Ruby's obviously ongoing, got stuff to is the only character who sort of nominally got stuff ongoing. But, like, yeah, John's story is done. Fucking Ren's story is done. Nora never had a story. Like, well, I guess we could be like, why is Nora this mysterious orphan? But I don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't care. Like, they did a whole season where they, they just they explored Ren's backstory, and I didn't care at the start, and I didn't fucking care at the end either. Like, it was just a pointless yeah. diversion. The main things you would need to do. You need to. We need to establish what it is Salem's trying to do. So we need to give them a clear goal to fight against. We need like concrete goals and, we, and and some expectation of what it is they're hoping to achieve. And we need, yeah, and we just need to shed some of these fucking characters. Just send them away. Yeah, like make an excuse for them to split up right away. But like they can't just tell them to go home now. <laughs> They would have to be on some other mission. Put fucking John and Nora and Ren on an airship. They can fuck off. You know what? Tell them to go get the vacuo relic. And then, like, maybe you just meet up with them a couple seasons later, and it's like, we failed. And it's like, well, yeah, obviously you would. <laughs> obviously, because they, they suck. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you get rid of those three. Kill Maria. Just kill her. We don't care. No one's going to mind. She could actually just leave. She could be like, I, I'm going to go get my eyeglasses repaired, which is the only reason I was here. So, see so, ya. Yeah. I don't care. And then, like, if it was just Team Ruby and Oscar and Crow... That's not so bad. That'd be fine. Yeah. That's, that, like you can you can work with that. Yeah. Because all the characters know each other. They've got a reason to, reasons to be together. Yeah, and they all have kind of dynamics. For the most part, the chemistry between the main four isn't bad. I mean, despite the fact that like there's a couple of those characters in there that never talk to each other. 
Yeah, Ruby never talks to Blake. Yeah, Ruby and Blake have no relationship. <laughs> it, it's like an it, in joke among the fandom that they don't speak ever. <laughs> <laughs> we need to shrink the cast, and we need to like give them concrete goals that they're trying to achieve, not vague ones that they yeah. just they just think they need to do, and it's never established why. Like, yeah, because again, they haven't told us. Like, we're just assuming that they want to put the relic in storage with the other one. All we know is that they want to make take relic to Atlas. <laughs> Yeah, same as all we've really known about Salem is she wanted to get the Jin relic. Yeah, and get Ruby and get magic people. But beyond that, we don't really we don't know. This is the thing, like, because like, yeah, you could do a show where we don't really know what Salem's up to, other than like she needs to be stopped. But they had a whole episode where they tried to tell us what Salem was going to do, and it just made us more confused and sympathetic. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It's <sighs> it's it's fucking wild. It really is. Like, my hope is that, like, listening to this, you kind of understand what's so fascinating about it to us. Because, like, it's it's really wild. <laughs> it is. It is. This is the thing. Because, like, for the longest time on the Discord, you guys were talking about Ruby. And I'd seen, like, one season. and Because the, the first seasons are very boring. And, and if you're not really into fights in the butt rock, then there's not much there for you. And yeah. I didn't get why you guys could talk about it this much for that long, so endlessly. Yeah. It, it, was, it was genuinely confusing to me. But then... You convinced me I had to watch through to season six, and sorry. <laughs> by that point, <laughs> by that point, now I understand. It, it it really is fascinatingly bad. Like every wrong decision is made. Like every time they're faced with a choice in terms of the, the, the writing and the direction of the show, they always dodge the wrong way. Yeah, and it's like, and there's so many like surprising number of times where it's like, oh, oh, maybe something kind of like not bad is gonna happen now. Oh, never mind. Oh, Neil's back. Oh, 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 oh now she's seeing. It's not just completely boring and unsavable and bad. There are kernels of good ideas in there. Like there's there's all these little moments where you go, well, you could just take it and shift this around and and and, and toy with it a bit, and you could see it being a good show. And like the things that are bad tend to be batshit enough that it's like this is very amusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 that sort of level of fascinatingly bad, and I've never I've never seen that sustained for such a long period. Yeah, because again, it's like they have their fan base that will watch no matter what. And they aren't beholden to a network. I guess now they kind of are. I don't know how much say AT and T has over them. Maybe it's like it's part of our contract with you that you don't get to say anything about what we do at Rooster Teeth. I suppose as long as the show continues to make money, I mean, which I guess it does. It must. It is in a unique position where they can just continue to make it for as long as they want, and and they've never had any reason to. There's never been anyone at the top of Rooster Teeth who's been competent enough to actually make this show, so. There's never been any reason to improve it because it is inexplicably successful. Like, that, I mean, the most baffling thing about Ruby is that it is successful. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get how you could watch this show and think it's good. It, it really seems like there's two kinds of... If you take, like, the people who don't kind of hate watch it or just, like, watch it to see what's happening now because they can't stop, it seems like... Or no, that's one of the kinds of fans, is, like, the people who... They loved the first two or three seasons. Yeah, they, they watched it at the right time in their lives. They were the right age, like, whatever. Yeah, and they're like, I, I know, it, it's it's not good anymore and the fights aren't any good, but I'm just going to keep watching because, you know, I want to see what happens with it. I'm curious. Like, a, you know, you know a lot of webcomic readers like that and stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. there's uh, the people who actually think it's good and they're very invested in every, like, they loved episode three and, oh, we're learning mm. things about the universe and those people I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, like the people who like Bumblebee is really important to them. I mean, in terms of representation, I suppose, but it's it's not like there isn't way better representation for lesbian relationships out there now. Like, yeah, that's not. It's just not in this show that they love. Most of us in the Discord want Bumblebee to sail, but not because we think that it's a compelling ship or that either of them is interesting. Because they don't really have any chemistry. They're just kind of. I'm the spunky one, or I used to be, and I'm the <laughs> reclusive one, which means that I don't have lines ever. Or I, or I used to be. Like, all, all, of the, all of the characters, have, apart from Weiss, have had their characters sublimated. Or... Yeah, Weiss is the only one who still feels like a specific character trope. Yeah, whereas the rest, the rest of them are so confused at this point, they just don't, they don't make any sense anymore. <sighs> like, like, it's, it's, like, Ruby has become nothing. Really? Yeah. Ruby used to be the Genki one, but she can't be now, so she's just the protagonist who does things. She She's the character with the silver eyes. <laughs> That's yeah. her most relevant character trait right now. Yeah. Yang went from being, like, the, the fun-loving... Party girl, 
team mom. Roll with the punches sort of person. And like, then she got cartoon PTSD and yeah, I don't know what she is now. Blake went from being a quiet girl to an ex faunus terrorist to a girl who's being stalked to a princess. And who the fuck knows what's going on with her? And, and now she's just like, she's like there's this faunus messiah character who has to like always be serious and has to be like... I know how to solve racism. We have to do better as the minorities. Blah blah blah. It's just <laughs> oh like, yeah, it's not. It's not a likable character. <laughs> Say what you will about season six, they didn't have that. That's true. I appreciate them not having that. They didn't have the the stand-in for the minority race saying, we need to make more of an effort to solve racism. We didn't get to really talk about Adam's brand. Oh, yeah. Because Adam dramatically takes off his mask that he's worn the entire time, and he has the logo of the Schnee Dust Company branded into his face. (laughs) It's like all like shittily branded over one eye, which seems like... That's such a, like, M. Night Shyamalan, what a twist. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. Because slavery has been outlawed for a long time, so it's not a slave brand. Even if it was, why the fuck would you put it there? So it's like, did he just accidentally get burned at some point? It's just, they were teasing for so long that we were finally going to see his face. Yeah, so it's like, it has to be something dramatic. We all had ideas about what sort of silly thing they could do. I don't think any of us expected this. It's just... And then, like, because again, like, uh, the heiress to the Schneeders company is in the team that he's been stalking this whole time, and he doesn't care. He has their brand on his fucking face. Again, you manage to do something that makes your show make even less sense. Yeah, God, if it was anything else. It, again, it's the same thing of, like, it's a cool idea. We think that's a cool idea, but you have not thought it through at all. Like, yeah, wouldn't that be dramatic? You really haven't thought about what this means for, the, for this character in this show, that he, that he doesn't care about Weiss, or possibly even knows she's there. Slavery wasn't legal anymore, so why would you brand with your company's logo and why would you put it on the guy's face damaging one of his eyes? Yeah, like, even if it was like, we're going to teach you a lesson, like, that's not very good PR. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's like if his face just said, like, drink Coke on it. It I mean, essentially, essentially, I guess the idea is it's a hate crime. Like, he was the victim of a hate crime. Yeah, but again, your company logo! Yeah, a hate crime on behalf of a corporation? Yeah, it's so fucking weird. Yeah, it just... It's not even that. Like, even that part of it, I'm like, okay, I could I could sort of see that part of it happening. It's just the fact that he doesn't give a shit about Weiss. That makes no sense. Yeah. It, none of it lines up. No. The worst thing is, like, because we talked about this before, if it wasn't Blake and Yang and it was Blake and Weiss... Yes! Checkmate! The two characters that actually did have, like, a compelling sort of chemistry, because they started off as enemies. They have that, like, fighting two friends kind of deal going on, which is very romantic. And they actually have, like, from two worlds, Romeo and Juliet kind of thing. They actually have some things in common in terms of trying to get away from their pasts and their families and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And And then Adam as a character, complicates their relationship. Yeah, and he has reasons to hate them both. <laughs> yeah, and, and and like it, it, that is just such a more compelling ship. And Because, yeah, Blake and Yang, whatever. Like, the- And they, like, barely interacted before the scene where Yang goes after Adam. Like, it makes me think of Madoka Rebellion in that it's like she is the Yang ship person because the fans liked shipping them. Yeah. Not because they had, like, any in-universe time together to really have a relationship. Whereas if it actually wanted to ship one of the characters, then yeah, that, that, there was a much better option sitting right there that actually yeah. would, would have been more compelling. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's, just, it's, a, it's a bad show. It's a bad show. It's a, it's a bad show. It can't be saved. You should watch it, though. <laughs> it is like, yeah, again... If you haven't seen it... I'm not huge on hate watching in general, even though I've, I've yeah. watched a lot of bad stuff for that the podcast to do, but Ruby is genuinely fascinating in the mo- the myriad ways it manages to be bad and, and, and how consistently bad. Yeah, and like we've mostly focused on one season. There's so many things that happen in the other seasons that like we didn't really get into. Oh, we, we, we could do entire podcasts about the other ones. I mean, you could probably compress four and five into one episode podcast, but like yeah. it, it really is like it's, the show is bad in so many ways. It's, it's very hard to cover. There's stuff we've missed. We, there's stuff we haven't talked about. From season six, it really is fascinating. But I, what, I, what I would recommend: watch it with people. Yes, it's, one of those, it's, it's kind of like the room. You need to watch it as a collective with other yeah. people, so you can you can enjoy how bad it is together. Watching watching something like the room on your own is just a sad exercise. Whereas, yeah, you want you want to do it with other people. Yeah, really get, is, get some drinks, you know. watch a bad anime. Ruby is not boring. No, Ruby's not boring. No, no, no. no, no well, okay, sometimes it's boring. Okay, yeah, season four <laughs> did happen. Occasionally it's boring, and you just want to skip through. But but it's it's 
for the most part of it, it's not boring. If you ever stop to think about Ruby, it's not boring. It's yeah. absolutely fascinating in a way that, like, yeah, Oscar is like just just a dull generic idea. This, no, Ruby, Ruby is is very much that. Ruby is a pastiche of a whole bunch of ripped off, stupid ideas, but it ma- it manages to be so fascinatingly awful, but almost good at the same time. Like, yeah, <laughs> that it, it's danced that line for six seasons, and it's just amazing. Yeah, like, and it's always like different kinds of problems that it has at any given time. It's mm. not always the same problem. Yeah, yeah, which is amazing. Yeah, they on the one hand manage to repeat the same mistakes, and on the other hand invent new ones. Like, yeah, it. Oh man. Fascinating. Just absolutely fascinating. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed us talking for three hours about why a show is bad, but why we won't stop watching it ever, and we have to keep talking about it. Yeah, but it's a terrible show. It's one of the worst shows I've ever seen. It's my favorite show. I'm obviously going to keep watching it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.